Not that I use it, but it's just basically making a reference mark and then the app will do the rest. Look straight, look straight. Jekono Jagger. So it captures the image and now the software does the work based on that reference. Freehand mark, okay. I will put uh, the blue, that red dot. It's got a gyro sensor, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, blue pair. Okay. Blue pair. Yeah. This way. Is it visible there? Or yes, yes, sir. Okay. You're clearly visible. Yeah. Now down, down, down. On the blue. Yeah. Okay. Blue, blue. Niche, niche. You're not very clearly audible. So, if uh, somebody could hold that mic closer to your face. Fine, fine, this way. Huh? So now I have aligned it according to blue mark. I will place the axis of placement I want, which is 173 as per the calculation. So now the new axis of placement is 180. So basically I have to mark along the mark where I have put it. Okay. I think the audio is little problem. So I will go ahead with the surgery now. Later again, once uh, now now am I audible? Yeah, absolutely clearly audible. Okay, okay, huh, now it's better. So I will maybe explain. Yeah, so uh, you clean and drape the patient. So uh, this patient. Sir, so, uh, something about where you are standing and where the uh, this thing mic receiver is there. So right now you're not audible. You were just audible a minute back. Actually, it's just two feet away, but I think there is some problem with the connection. Is it better? Uh, barely. Is it? Hello? Yeah, it's, it's wa waxing and waning. Sort of what uh, toric lens are you using over here? Hello. Am I okay? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Zero. I'm going to watch something else. Yeah, I think Chiranji, we are holding something. Can you hold that closer to the camera so that we can see it? Yeah, I think from the cover we can make out, uh, but it's not very clear. But uh, yeah, it's technus toric. I think ZCU2. Yeah, it's Technostoric 2. And there's a second generation but of Technostoric. How, how do I so, uh, those who have used Technostoric for some time would know there was a first generation and this is the second generation. The hello, difference hello, is in the hello, haptic. Hello, hello, the haptics hello, are kind of, you know, hello, uh, hello, a little hello, rough hello, at the outer surface. So hello, hello. The stability of the IOL is enhanced in the uh, post op period. So, uh, the rotation is hello, not there practically. Not. Hello. Hello. First generation. I think most of us were very happy with the first generation itself, but this takes the level of satisfaction to a much higher level. Thank you, Chiranjeev. Thank you. Hello. 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 We can't hear you, Saurabh. So somebody can work on the mic, or at least. Pradeep ko to sab ho Very very stable. You have to be very very stable around because otherwise waxing when it's left. Yeah, hello Dr. Suen. Yeah, Sarab. If we can hear you. The caller mic I think is not working well. Now we can hear you. Yeah, so there will be some waxing waning because uh, he, uh, Mr. Chiranjit is using the hand mic just to... Uh, but this is pretty audible and we are happy with this. So a little, little uh, exercise for Chiranjit. Won't do him any harm. <laughs> And uh, we all know Saurabh uh, does have uh, uh, 
regular life surgery he broadcasts it so uh, life surgery is not something new to him and uh, he can uh, keep talking he has a wonderful fellowship program uh, from people from all over the world come over and uh, nandadi pai hospital means principally in sangli but i think he's got plenty of branches now all over maharashtra i think and some spilling into karnataka also probably so nice to have dr saurav patwadan over here with us hello 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 yeah the hello, hello. is audible hello hello dr suen hello am i audible the camera feed has gone yeah that's right hello am i audible dr suen yes yes okay so i think we'll go very slow this time because i think uh, we are not used to live surgery and uh, patient is also little bit anxious i think yes yes okay. so we'll just take our time please please be comfortable yeah. and let the ot staff also be comfortable yeah. and uh, also i'm not used to many machines here so hello hello yeah hello hello Hello. Chair is fixed, hello. Sir. Hello. Chair doesn't go up down. Hello. It's fine. Hello. No. Hello. 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 It's okay. It's okay. okay. We'll start. It's okay. Hello. Okay. Hello. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm not touching hello. the cap. Okay. Mala marking. Hello. 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 So here. as we checked it on the itori cap i have to mark at 180 so actually i don't need the mendes ring but i am just showing okay so these are the marks so in case it was say 170 i have to mark accordingly but here it is exactly on the marks only the final axis so i will just mark it with my iris repositor drag but better to just dry the area which i have to mark so that will be the axis where i am going to put a uh, right hiloni baba and you're using a superior incision probably no uh, I just sit at head end. Yeah. But I use the temporal incision itself. Okay. So you are sitting at the head end, but you use the temporal incision. Yeah. Okay. Baba, see that action. So uh, here, uh, usually I use a coaxial IA. Okay. But here I am going to use a bimanual. So I'll be putting two incisions to begin with. Diagonal. Can we request everyone to keep their mobiles on silent mode, please? This, I think, the xylocin is it, right? Intercameral xylocin. So I generally make a incision which is limbal, right? So we are getting a very good view of the microscope, sir. Is it okay? Yes, yes, pretty good. Okay. so i generally don't use dye in most of the cases because i use the retro illumination but here i felt that the retro illumination is little less so i'm going to stain it with trypan blue the more the better the anterior chamber in this case is little shallower on side i want find it out. hello okay so i think in the yella uh, okay so saline mode no problem so 
this is Hylio code, which is uh, similar to with code. And now that I use it in all my cases, give methyl cellulose. Methyl cellulose and hyaluronic. So hyaluronic code is the uh, same combi combination of sodium hyaluronate and uh, chondroitin sulfate, is it? Yeah. And uh, I'll be using the Inamura forceps. So initially I thought that I may require a B hex ring, Dr. Suen. Yeah. But, but it looks like a hyaluronic has done the job. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, once you dilute it with a you know OVD, there is always a chance that it may go down after. Okay. So these are the markings of five mm on the Inamura forceps. I try to keep it five to five point five. Checking the size. Okay. Half, I hope it is focused. Absolutely. Okay. So now next part will be hydro dissection. I am going to let some hyaluronic out, particularly when you use this high density viscoelastic. Make sure that it doesn't block the incision while you are doing hydro dissection. Hydro dissection go under the capsule, push, you can see a nice wave there and anterior place displacement of the nucleus which means the hydro is complete. I am using the uh, Anyone in the audience want to ask a question please feel, yeah. feel, feel free to ask. So we can also rotate it multiple times like many surgeons promote. Uh, so no, we'll see. First I will uh, do some sculpting. Now uh, though I have used this machine, it's a bit new because I don't use it very often. I have just done few such cases. And uh, Dr. Pradeep Mohanta sir is there I think. He has a mic with him. Dr. Pradeep sir. So he can guide us all with the settings, FECO settings. I think now we have kept it on the uh, sculpt mode. Is that right? We just do some sculpt here just to judge. Now go to the FECO one, which is chop. Chop, okay. Just bury. And then the great thing about this machine is that excellent hold. So though I was not perfectly placed with the FECO tip, still it chopped it. Okay. Excellent hold. And even if it is partially holding, yeah, like that's the tip is, that's the best part. Even without burying into the mat nuclear material, it's holding pretty well. Yeah, now to quadrant removal. I think quadrant removal, what setting? FECO two. So what I've seen is that for chop, uh, Mohanta sir uses 450 to FECO2. Yeah. So now for FECO T, he uses uh, 350, I think. Is that right? Yeah. 300. 300, yeah. That, that's a good thing because you don't want fluctuations while doing the quadrant removal. And I think it's a continuous FECO, right? Yeah, so I have to uh, use my foot switch to control. And uh, as an Alcon user, I think the uh, first thing which I feel different in this machine is the FECO foot switch. Okay, as Dr. Suen, I was, uh, I was mentioning, yeah. once the visco goes out, many times this uh, tends to become smaller. Yes, and with the nucleus contacting the iris, Correct. again uh, the prostaglandin release will also cause a little bit of meiosis. I am little bit anterior to oh, what I generally be because of the new machine which is not used to quite often. But I have used the uh, Hylucote to make sure that endothelium is safe. 
and I'm controlling the. You can. Uh, I want to move. We can reduce the vacuum further for the last piece, maybe 200. Vacuum, kitna hai? No, no. 200, no. Peko two hai, no. Arey two pe karo, no. Arey arey. Patient is moving. Is he okay? Patient is okay. Don't move, don't move. What is the vacuum like? What is what is he having? What happened? Patient needs some assistance. <laughs> I think Saurabh, while your patient is, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> giving you stress, <laughs> we do understand uh, that, uh, I mean, these are happenings that uh, do happen and in life surgery, uh, you need to maintain your food. But uh, what I would like to highlight while Saurabh was doing the surgery, so one uh, thing that he did uh, before he did the rexis was he hydrated the side port so that before he entered the main port, it was nice and tight globe and the entry of the main port was excellent. So he did not put viscoelastic before that and uh, it was uh, a nice tight globe and you can see what uh, lovely incision he has. And of course uh, the pupil is coming down yeah. and uh, yet with the pupil coming down, uh, excellent uh, removal of the last fragments of the nucleus. Adrenaline. And uh, um, Saurav is asking for adrenaline which is the right thing. And uh, even if uh, adrenaline does not open up, possibly it is uh, a nifus uh, that is happening. Uh, we do not know whether the patient is on tamsulosin or it's a light product. But uh, even if it does not open, yet with good viscoelastic, the amount of uh, cortical cleanup can be done and uh, quite well. So it just needs that you do not need to uh, traumatize the iris at this point of time. And uh, because if there is handling of the iris, then the pupil would come down even more. So I think uh, <laughs> BHEX will come and help. <laughs> Actually, Suban is waiting for that statement. <laughs> Hello, hello. I think they have little issues over there, so we'll switch this conversation. Uh, so, uh, Vinit was asking, can what would you like to use? Hello, hello. If you have hello. intraop meiosis. So, yes, after nucleus at any stage. Uh, after nucleus, let's say at this stage. Let, let's say at this stage. So I think you have a choice of, you best is to use whatever you're most comfortable with. Because these are uh, stressful situations. Uh, there's no point changing your usual management. So you have the option of using iris hooks or a pupil expander, whichever you're comfortable with. Uh, now, what differentiates or what makes the difference over here is any device which will not catch the capsule rexis as well and helps you differentiate between the iris plane or the pupil plane and the capsular rexus plane. So that is easiest with iris hooks and the BHEX. 
because they have a very thin profile. So the key is basically whatever you use, inject a little bit of viscoelastic over the anterior capsular rim to lift off the iris from the anterior capsular rim. So that creates the space. So when you place your first iris hook, that creates a plane. Actually, that tenting, you can use that as a guide to get the rest of the three iris hooks in place. You will never, ever catch the capsular rim. Again, with the B hex, the same thing. Once you have tucked the first flange in, you go all the way and tuck that flange and take it to the periphery. So now let's see, we're back, we're back to Saurabh, so let's the see what he is doing over here. The patient is not cooperative. I asked if he has pain, but I think he has pain somewhere on in the head, I think the head. Uh, yes, we can use okay. intracameral adrenaline or phenocaine. He has a pain. Uh, adrenaline does the job pretty well. Yes, but the problem is if from the head, so I can't do about anything about that. You have a little issue over here, I think, as we can see. I, uh, regular I, capac I one. So I will just go slow. I, I think the patient might move in between. If he has pain in the eye, I can block. So right. Dr. Saurabh is using basically flow parameters to keep the people as stationary as possible. And I think that's a little bit of epi nucleus that is there. And he is more used to coaxial uh, IA. Ah, okay. So probably no, no. bimanual is a little bit of a... Retro uh, Microscope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much better. Yes, yes. You have more uh, uh, room to move around. Uh, should I block the patient if patient has pain? Yes, Pankaj. So basically what happens, it depends on what you are comfortable. Here, biomanual has advantage, but I have a small modified technique. I use always coaxial. So what I do, I infer like one side, wherever the accessibility is there, I use the coaxial, but I just go with the left hand, other hand, uh, other, no, 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 without, see, I don't, I, yeah, see, it is, it's a very simple, see, it is a very simple thing, I use a coaxial only, in the other hand, I put the bimanual without any attachment. So by manual thing without any attachment and then you have a 360 degree gases. So once you have a that thing, that works as a very little bit aspiration is there because the flow inside the eye. So slowly you just lost the, dislodge that thing and it is easily comes out. So if, ti if something is there, like uh, that's what it works very well. So Length ready you have a basically those who have started with that one machine. No, those who started early using coaxial, some people have shifted to the bimanual, some people is old timer who doesn't, who is not shifted. <laughs> so that's a very good dance that we see yeah. <laughs> in the interior chamber. Fantastic. So Fantastic, now. very good Saurav, uh, thank you very much, excellent. So I'm also very used to coaxial only. I can hardly use. Yeah, you mind. have a big round of applause from the audience here, Saurav. Sort of. Thank you, sir. And we can see a very, very nice capsular excess, uh, all well, and the pupil size uh, quite large. Yeah. So now the last part is uh, the IL implantation. Of course, the second last, because last will be the ISCO, and then the closure. Uh, can you? Uh, this is the. Technics to Rick 2, right? So with the prostate haptic. 
I have used uh, both Shakti Storic 1 as well as 2 before. Yeah. COVID 1%. Yeah. 1%. Uh, Technus platform 1%. lens, which is anyway, uh, all of us who have used it, it has an excellent stability. And uh, as Shubhendra very correctly said, the Toric which came, uh, the, this is a second generation Toric. So the stability has further increased. And this, this is a filling up is done very beautifully. As you can see, the trailing haptic has been put on the optic, which is uh, a very uh, valid way of uh, putting this lens so that uh, in case it, it will never get struck rather when you deliver it in the eye. Uh, once you can deliver one of the haptics inside, let's see what uh, Dr. Patwarandan is doing. And very nicely, this positioning of the lens, not very far off from the nozzle. So you don't have to push much of the viscoelastic inside when you are putting it. With the, I generally don't use the screw type injector. Uh, just okay. use the so full yes. size. Uh, I think sort of we are not able to hear you very clearly. Can Hello. You? Yeah, Hello? that's yeah, fine. Yeah. So I generally use the push type of injector. So in push type, you just have to be more aware while injecting that you don't you know, push strongly. Because sometimes there is a tendency of shooting of the IOL. Yeah. Okay. I will just position it before I remove the yeah, visco. Uh, sort of, uh, actually the mic has to be closer to Hello, your hello. Yes. Yeah, I, yes. I, I will Go just, ahead. Uh, this is what go by my book. <laughs> so will now uh, the IOL is positioned. Uh, I'm not sure. Can you see the mark? Uh, we can see the marks. Uh, see, uh, somebody has to hold the mic quite close to your... Close to, okay. Yes. Hmm. So, so, uh, so, so, I have used so sort of we are interested to know how you are going to position the toric marking, uh, what you had on your app, and how does that translate okay. to the uh, toricity uh, leveling that you are doing now. Yeah, so uh, basically I asked it already, uh, what, what happened in this case, uh, somebody is at uh, near me. Okay, I have removed the OVD. Okay, good. So what I have done here is I have removed, I have used 1% hyaluronate and that's what I was saying. 1% hyaluronate is very useful in these cases because it just gets washed off very quickly. Okay. Hello, hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, go ahead, Saro. Yeah. Okay. Yes, very good. Excellent, excellent. Very nice. So what we have done is uh, after doing iotic mask, I calculated the new axis of placement, which was at 180 only. That means that is according to the mark. So I already marked these points and I have to align it accordingly only. So basically what iTORIC does is it removes the need of slit lamp mark. So excellent uh, demonstration uh, Saurav and uh, we see that uh, the TORIC markings are absolutely in conjunction with the yeah. markings that you have. So I think I will just put some uh, so what he highlighted is uh, the slit lamp marking is uh, taken away and with the app he has been able to mark it very well and uh, during the his manual marking you would have noticed that he was just standing and he was quite casual about the man manual marking because his app would take care of any extended toricity that is there. So that's the beauty of this. So you don't have to be extremely particular when you are doing the manual marking. So the app does uh, the big trick. Wait, so wait. once you remove the speculum at that time also you should wait. check whether the wait. lens is at wait. its position or not. Wait, wait, because wait. there can be sudden gush of uh, aqueous and yeah. the lens can rotate at that time. Correct. That's what I am checking now. And just you may 
have to hydrate it little bit more because when you are removing the speculum, sometimes the incision gets pressed. So now it looks all fine. So uh, sort of se bolne ka. Yeah, yeah. Now it looks fine. So I'm just closing the case now. Yeah, yeah. sort of excellent surgeries yeah. in spite of so many odds, new machine, patient uncooperation. Great job, sir. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you doctor. Hello, hello, Partho. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Now talk of Shugato Paul, please start. Yeah, Shugato. Uh, audio visual. Uh, nee, hello, 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 hello. Uh, Pradeep, uh, the audio visual will have to be changed to. Hello. Can you audio visual like you watch and key? Sick. Hello. 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 Prosenjit could have Prosenjit. Hello. Hello, hello. 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 Hey, PowerPoint. Huh? Hello. Hello. Enable content. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. The audio is closing. No, we can only Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Uh, no, uh, connection to Hotse. 
Saurav, uh, are you ready? Oh, that's a neat, neat rock hard. Rana Ghat is rock hard. Saurav, are you comfortable with such a Rana Ghat is rock hard? What you can do, eh, do is, if you're not comfortable, no, you take that cataract out and throw it at Pradeep Mahanto. <laughs> I think I also come from... Uh, uh, So the blade that you're using um, is an excellent blade, uh, the side port, and uh, a good blade on the side port really works well. Next day you can hardly see the incision site. Yeah, and uh, all the blades that so uh, sort of you're sitting at the head end. Are you sitting at the head end or uh, temporal? Uh, I think the audio connection also again has some problem. Yeah. But so what, what huh. I was saying is that most of the blades that I use are produced in West Bengal. So is this going to be a toric also, um, sort of, or uh, uh, this? Uh, they want me to demonstrate. This is region from upper semi region, yeah, multifocal. Upper. Now this patient is already blocked. Of course, uh, we can do with methyl cellular also. And uh, the machine I'm going to use is a uh, pro orbit, right? Yeah. Again, I am going to use the Inamura forceps. Yes. So this is not an intumescent cataract. Yeah, it's not an intumescent cataract that we can see. And uh, a very, very neat and round rexis that you are making. And, and in these uh, dilated pupil, actually, we tend to sometimes overdo, like make a big rexis. And uh, which sometimes has yeah. issues if you have going for a. So I will just show the size of the rectus. We will see. So this is around 5, 5.5. 5. So that was a quick measure that he did. Again, uh, whenever you are using high viscoelastic, like heavier viscoelastic agents, make sure yeah, that you uh. decompress the AC well. I think again uh, somebody has to hold the mic close to yeah, your. So I'm just saying that whenever you use, many times what happens for a difficult case, you tend to use, you know, occasionally these heavy viscoelastic agents. 
and you have to remember to decompress it well before you do hydro. Yes. Otherwise, there is a chance of uh, hydro rupture. So go you're going ahead with multiple uh, little uh, squirts of fluid. Yeah. So in uh, uh, in cases where you can see the PC well, yeah. you can just go with one go. But where you can't see, I think it's a good idea to do multiple. Quite true. Things. Yes. I think we are getting that point. So where you can see the PC well and you know that there is no PPC, so you can go ahead with one jet and uh, simply do it all. Uh, whereas when you cannot see the, uh, we're not sure the PPC is there or not in a hard cataract, so you can li give little squirts and uh, be very gentle about the hydro uh, dissection. So uh, I'm using this machine for the first time. Uh, but I have heard good things. Uh, Sir, uh, what machine are you using? Uh, Galaxy Pro Orbital? The Galaxy Pro Orbit, yes. Okay, yeah. And uh, he has given me the parameters for sculpt, I think. Yes, is that right? Yes. Okay. So, only thing which I feel in upper machines is there is little bit of lag in footage press and the delivery. Uh, can we go to shop? I will try. Yes, uh, there is a little bit of, uh, yeah. I think, uh, just getting a hang of the machine. Should uh, I continue? Yeah. Is this occlusion? Karapki. Okay, I could do it. Yeah, I think as uh, Dr. Suen sir said, it's getting used it's to. Uh, this uh, Galaxy Pro Orbital is uh, something I uh, think I've been using uh, very recently. And uh, uh, I think, yeah, I'm very happy with it. it yeah, the machine, uh, this Galaxy Pro Orbital uses uh, uh, transversal technology in a very different way. It uses actually a, a combination of uh, ellipse and transversal. So it's a uh, orbital technology. and at that is on all times. You cannot you cannot switch between your linear and orbital, and it's about seventy percent uh, linear and thirty percent or uh, orbital all the time. Okay. But it you have to get used to it. It's the the sound of the uh, tip is a little different. It's a more metallic sound, and it just for those who have been used Corner to linear, linear for a long time, the hold is excellent. The hold is excellent, okay, Dr. and uh, Dr. in Swain? fact, the energy utilization is much much less. Yeah. So. So you mean to say the uh, proposed fix between the uh, ozil and I mean torsional and the longitudinal? Is that yes, yes. Okay. So we don't have to bother about changing anything, just the power. Exactly. All okay. that we need to work is on the power it's and uh, the uh, flow, flow rate. So that the, the energy delivery the is controlled there completely. So uh, what I noticed just now is there is little bit of surge with these settings. Okay. So I want it to reduce. So this is for PG trainees. So when, when you start the quadrant removal, that is the time you should set the parameter for your last piece. Yes. Okay. Uh, and you can switch between, uh, let's say, the, for this kind of... So can you... For this kind of cataract, probably a, 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 a pulse so would see, be good. See, there is a post I think the flow rate needs to be worked on. Post occlusion surge. Uh, generally, the chamber is very stable if you have worked your flow rates properly. Uh, Dr. Suen, can you hear me? Yeah, we can, can hear you in bits and so pieces. So there was again a post-occlusion surge, so we should not continue with the same parameter. So I think... Yeah, yeah you can go down on the flow rate a lot. I think if you keep your VAC at about 380 and flow rate at, uh, uh, say, again, four, I think uh, 35, 40, 35, 34 is good enough. Okay. So again, there was a post-occlusion surge. I am waiting for further correction. So this is where I should spend time. What surgeons many times do is that they continue, again there is a surge, so I am not very happy with the... And you need to adjust it with according to the machine, the tip, the rest of the flow rate, so every, every, every surgeon, I think this is new for you, uh, you've not been using the Galaxy Pro Orbital earlier, is it? No, no. Yeah. Uh, it was Centurion. Uh, I don't know what's being used over here, I would use, I generally use about 380 vac, it's enough. And How uh, much vacuum, Dr. Suen? You bring down the vac to about 380. What is the vacuum right now? How much VAC are you using? 2.4 or something, 280. You can't get you. How much vacuum are you using, Saurabh? Uh, how much? Please tell. 240, 250 they have kept. Then that should
should be good. You can, I mean, if you're having surge, you can bring down the flow rate a little bit. That's flow rate is not available. Bring the flow rate down to below 30, that will help. 27. So ah, he has good. brought it down significantly. Uh, and how much is the ultrasonic retro, energy? Retro, please. Retro, please. Yeah. Is it visible there, retro? Yeah, yeah, very clear. We are getting yeah. a good globe in between, now, between the quadrants. Why I did retro is because I want to see the PC. What, what yes. is the behavior of the PC now? Okay, it's a little bit fluctuating there, okay? So what I will do, I will just come out, will reduce everything, okay? Put visco, okay? Give it time. Main thing of, uh, we are doing live surgery is to, you know, teach the beginners, because expert can manage everything. So I put visco elastic in. I want the parameters to slow down significantly now. What is the parameter? Maybe uh, if I was using and continuous irrigation, and maybe I am using this machine regularly, maybe I wouldn't come down as the Dr. Suvain was saying. But here I can see, uh, clearly see the fluctuations which are in the posterior capsule. So I don't want to take any chance. Can you increase the uh, retroillumination mode a little bit? So I change that, right? Ah, well. And if so you want to have better, better control, you can go to occlusion micropulse. That kind of makes things much slower. Yeah, now, you can see the yeah, uh, yeah. chamber is much stable. Machine tubing, because if you can use the original infusion, which is actually a very wide bore uh, tube. Okay. So I've just come here anteriorly. Galaxy Pro Orbital. And, uh, See, now the chamber is very stable. So it's just a matter of IL working IL on the flow rate. And uh, give me a coaxial if you can. So overall, I think the machine is very good. The shopping I could do quite Pro easily. Uh, only thing, like, you know, know, every time you use a different machine, you have to get used to the parameters which are suspect for your style of surgery. Uh, irrigation on and what are the parameters? So this is a straight tip coaxial IA. Is it 2.8 or okay. 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 So I generally use the angle one. Now just perfect. So it's a linear vacuum and uh, what I have noticed in this machine is that the vacuum control is very good of the machine. I think it's the FECO delivery which has little lag. Probably they have to work on that a bit. But as uh, you know, uh, we get used to certain lag, like I am using Ingenuity and probably it has little bit of lag, but uh, once I do a case or two, I don't feel uh, the lag anymore. Saurav, yeah. uh, we are not able to hear you very well. Hello. Ah, yes, uh, I think uh, someone has to uh, yeah, hold, hold the, the mic, mic, mic very close, yeah. very close. So what I was saying is that uh, Vapasami has definitely improved a lot over years and uh, we in fact have in one of the centers their uh, retina machine with uh, Venturi. But I think they have to work on the lag part of it. Uh, watching this surgery in this machine of Apasami reminds me of my first machine. So as Sir said, they have really improved a lot and uh, this was really excellent chamber stability and all the steps that were being done uh, with such a total cataract and of course skill matters but, uh, but still this stability of this during PECO uh, so was we'll really good. Sorry. Uh, sorry, somebody. Hello. So, I'm yeah, so this is upper, upper lens. We can yeah, sir is using uh, upper Sami multifocal superfurb region. It's a combination of diffractive and refractive both. And it has an addition uh, power of 3.5 in the center. 
This is a preloaded and your low chromophore lens. And then remove and uh, it's locked. That's an excellent preloaded system. Excellent. And now I need a 1% halogenate. Yeah, so this is a preloaded hydro, hydro, uh, hydrophobic lens and it's a multifocal, uh, the region lens. Uh, it's uh, again, like I said, it's a, a combination. Uh, talking about the delivery, it's, uh, it's a very simple uh, loading uh, system where actually you could inject viscoelastic from uh, right the nozzle or right from under the lens itself, you can inject it. And if you have enough viscoelastic, yeah, actually so the delivery is very, very smooth. Fantastic, I think. Very smooth. There you go. And uh, then the trailing haptic is pushed inside. Yeah, excellent. In the back delivery, absolutely fine. I think Perfect I job, Saurabh. Yeah, uh, so. Hey, irrigation continues. Haji, continue. So. I generally prefer angled IA Pro, which uh, helps in uh, negotiating the IOL. Clear and hellos is a lot of what we tell, how we explain counseling. It's glare and hellos, dysphotopsia. Dysphotopsia, yes, it does exist. And it will be there to a greater or lesser extent everywhere. Yes, yes. So, uh, we'll just excellent job. Saurabh, you're getting a loud round, round of applause. Thank, thank you for you. a lovely demonstration. Thank you, sir. And S thanks a lot, so uh, Dr. Pradeep Mohanta, sir, for this unique opportunity. And uh, I've been fortunate to visit him a few years back. And I can see a you know, huge change in the hospital also in five, six years. And what you know impressed me when I visited last is his uh, you know, social work. So he's building a big school, I think, uh, and for blind students as well as it regular. And conducts a lot of uh, social activities, which I think I'm sure it's a privilege for us to have two stalwarts of uh, uh, YouTube <laughs> yes. with us over here. Mm. So what, what we would call influencers in the current generation's technology. I will hear, so, uh, just yeah. Sarab, this is excellent. Uh, the, this uh, new machine, upper sum is machine, he usually doesn't operate. But new machine, new place, and such a beautiful surgery show another technique like here I feel that the region is leaking a bit mm -hmm. so I'm going to do a wong pocket just yes to and hydrate it yeah so this is the wong pocket so there was a little bit of hypotony when I you know hydrated so I will just hydrate this wong pocket now and done now you can yeah, see so, uh, <coughs> so those who have uh, right. just uh, seen this is a wonderful way if you have uh, uh, wound leak, uh, yes, go ahead because you cannot, in, uh, I mean, hydrate that uh, superior lip uh, as much through the wound. So you just create a pocket over the wrong pocket and you inject, uh, just hydrate that. So that kind of now has two lips. So the posterior lip of the new pocket kind of uh, goes and seals the original incision. Yeah, so one take home message I think we have from this is any new surgeon, if you're having a surge, just go down on your flow rate. Yeah. Go down on your flow rate, just keep going down and you will have a stable entry chamber at one point. And uh, just one more point, I think I'm just seeing this lens under microscope for the first time. I think it's beautiful. Yes. You can it see those rings. Very think, elegant. Uh, it's a very fine job done as compared to, you know, earlier generation of trifocals where the edges could be seen more prominently leading to glares. I think I'm sure this will work well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So uh, we'll quickly grab, uh, thank you, Sir Dr. We'll quickly grab a talk from Dr. Deepa uh, Shah on uh, topical FACO because the next one uh, surgery is a life surgery on topical FACO. So anyone who's not moved to topical FACO, this is the opportunity to learn. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, I am very happy to be a part of this beautiful program. Now, uh, Pradeep sir, tell there are so many freshers are there. So you could say something right, uh, go topical regarding the topical, moving to the topical FECO emulsification. 
Now, why the evolution is needed? Can you see the difference? This is the picture of the movie of an old one, and this is the latest picture I saw of Karan Johar. See the difference of the sets. So we should go topical. Why this evolution is needed? Because it causes less fear. The patient very often are willing to do surgeries. We can motivate hello, the patients. Hello, hello, there hello, is hello. a wow factor. So hello, we should uh, hello, hello. come out of our comfort zone and go to the hello, shift hello. to topical. So we can avoid certain complications from peribulbar block to topical, but choosing the right patient is very, very important. The patient should be cooperative. We should not choose dip set eye for the beginners, good midriasis, uncomplicated cases, and we should start with NS2, the ideal case for the topical. But remember, topical anesthesia is not for medium. Uh, can we have the OT mic hello, hello, switched hello. off? Hello. If you are testing it, it, it's fine, but uh, you can do it internally over there. Thank you. Yeah. So topical anesthesia is not for every case hello, and for hello, everyone. Hello. Surgeons' requirement is a consistency in surgical outcome, confidence in your surgical skill. It should be ASIO fast. Select your patient properly. Avoid over-anxious patient. Now, there is a trick while doing a planation tonometry and 90 diopter. We can isolate our patients, those who can go for the topical FACO. Avoid such complicated cases like small pupil, IFS, certain comorbidities, sublaxated lenses, repeat surgeries, sublaxation, all this. Now, initially, when I started topical, I used to give a little subconjunctival injection so that at I least uh, avoid my mental block to shift to topical. Some surgical tips. So Stop. you have to fix Think. your eye properly, whether it is with a Johnson butt, whether it is a forcep. Do not hesitate to fix the eye so flow because it causes lots of upthrust. Never use unnecessary BSS to irrigate the cornea. It irritates your patient. The hydro dissection should be complete because forceful hydro dissection may cause lots of pain. Overfilling of viscoelastic should be prevented while capsulorexis and also while IOL implantation. So uh, the, your IOP, the working IOP should be low. Initially, I used to work with a 70. Then I got a diffuse surge. And then I realized now I work with 35 to 40. Or you can reduce your bottle height. Selection of cases is very important. You can see initially you can go with this soft cataracts, but this type of herd and mature cataract go with the peribulbar. Posterior polar cataract, uveitic cataract, and this subsluxated lenses, you should go with the peribulbar anesthesia. I have a very too small video. See this patient with the topical. I counsel a lot. He promised me, but still moving an eye, just tossing the eye, and I was waiting for just when he looks straight, I will introduce into the interior chamber. But anyhow, I tried to, I got stand, then completed my rexis with a good St. Martin forcep. I had to hold and fix the eye. There was a lot of upthrust was Instruments there. Instruments are yes, sir. Can met the chop and gradually I emulsify, crack the nucleus and emulsified it. Now, in topical FACO, a very important one is vocal anesthesia. With each and every important step, you should tell your patient, I am doing this, please keep straight. 
So this part is also very, very important. Now you see what after the cleaning of the cortical matter, when I was injecting the lens, the patient just moved her eyes and it really was very difficult. But still I suggest select the soft cataract so that if there is any problem, you can go supracapsular phaco and can get rid of. But this is my second case where you see initially don't choose this type of Hello. cataract. Yes. At the end you yes, see sir. there is a extension of the rexis but I continued cut the capsular tag, did my chopping But the patient, while chopping, moved his head and I, it was very difficult as I was very tense, the rexis was extended. But anyhow, completed my emulsification. Now you see there is a small PCR. So I planned first to inject the IOL, then remove my cortical matter. So. The take home message is we should come out of our comfort zone and move forward for the topical FACO, but select your cases and be confident in yourself so that you can go topical for every case. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Deepa. Yeah, yeah, please. I'll just check with the OT. Uh, is the OT ready? If the OT is ready, our talks are done here. Uh, if you're not ready, we'll get in another talk. Yeah, Sudeep, uh, can you hear us, Sudeep? Yeah. Shugata, you can take over. My, you can. Yeah, Sudeep, that was problem. People who are starting uh, topical, if you use your left-hand instrument for stabilizing the eyeball, when you make the side uh, incision on the right side, if you're a right-handed person, when you also make the left-sided opening, and through that you can use a bent colibri or an iris repositor whenever. So this eye movement that she was showing, this is very difficult. So you can stabilize the eyeball and still continue with it. This is one thing, and uh, that PCR part, that you have noticed it, it's better to fill it up and then come out. So these two things I just wanted to add. Uh, wonderful talk, Dr. Deepa. Uh, a few things uh, we have to learn is everything has a teething uh, space, and like with multifocals, our indications have changed. So with topical also, right now there is practically no exception to topical, except for maybe subluxated or things. Now the most important thing about topical is, forget that you're doing a topical. The moment you bring that into the picture, it makes your life difficult because the patient really, really doesn't care. Patient does not feel pain. I know, I know. Patient does not feel pain. You need to tell the patient that they'll feel touch, they'll feel movements. They will not feel pain. They might feel pressure. So these three things, if you tell them in advance, they are pretty much prepared. They need to keep both their eyes open. That's very important. With the block, you can, they can do whatever they choose with the other eye. But here, they need to keep both their eyes open and gaze, look at the light. So these, I think, three things. And the other things you can hold, actually a topical gives pretty good anesthesia. It lasts for 10 minutes easily. So you can keep topping it up as much as you want. You can hold with the forceps. And the moment you have bimanual control, you have a FACO handpiece inside and a second instrument in the eye, actually the patient's movement doesn't matter. So those are the steps where you can just uh, breeze through. And whenever you have just a unimanual control, that's when the patient's eyes movement will make a difference. Uh, Shall we go ahead with my talk? Yeah, I think so. I think we can go ahead if they're not ready. They, they, if the OT is ready, you can let us know or we'll do yeah, it. Yeah, uh, so when the OT is ready. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, we'll wait. Uh, let, you can go live. You can okay. Go yeah. Okay. So now patient Dr. Sudeep Das is ready for the show. We are ready too. Yeah, so Sudeep uh, is a wonderful friend. Uh, he's had a wonderful uh, career and he chose to uh, sacrifice a high-flying career at Narayan Netrala and settle down in uh, Ganjam. It's a sm uh, small place, uh, uh, about 
I think four hours drive from the airport in Bhubaneswar. And he's doing phenomenal work over there. If you uh, can visit his hospital, it's an ultra model hospital in the middle of nowhere. Am I audible? Yeah. I think I am. Yeah, Sudeep, all yours. Oh, we okay. can't see your li live feed. We can hear you in bits and pieces. We don't have a camera feed from the OT. Camera. We don't see camera. anything on our screen. Not yet. We have the slide from the OT probably showing Dr. Sudeep's picture, a still picture. Yes, Sudeep Das is from Odisha. Right now in Ganjam. Ganjam, Ganjam, right now in Ganjam. It's uh, Sankara. Sankara. Uh, can somebody help? Yes, we have uh, the microscope view. Yeah, and the and the. Yes, you're live. Uh, Dr. Sudeep has been training uh, cataract surgeons for a very long time. Uh, again, uh, same as Pradeep Mahato. And, uh, Saurabh Patwardhan, he, had a wonder, he was part of a wonderful training program in Narayad Netrale. And then he moved over and took charge of this hospital. And he's one of, made a beautiful hospital over here. Wonderful team of doctors. Yes, so yeah, we were just talking about this. So this is going to be topical and a mature cataract. Okay, it's uh, horizontally, not yes. vertically. Hmm. He's still looking up. Yeah, we can see the red glow beautifully. This is basically omniglow or enhanced retro illumination. No, 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 not like this. Ah, this is, this is, this. No, this is okay. No, no, this is just reduce, reduce. Ah, now you will see the red glow. No, 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 you can't, you can't increase the illumination here now. This will be the fix. It is a fact fix. Oh, I see. Uh, Dr. Sudeep is getting ready for surgery in the hall can we hear yeah yeah we can hear you okay light light of the yeah sudeep that's your voice loud and clear sudeep you can speak in odia the patient will understand we are very close by
another thing on the uh, topical, if you're doing and you have a slight squint, I always prefer to cover the other eye. Works wonderful. Mature cataract, I cover the other eye. So patient has got no choice but to fix it with this eye. Now, if the al uh, almost total cat track, little bit red glow, we can see. So, Dr. Sudip has decided to stain the capsule. Yeah. Copper. Patient seems to be a little bit anxious. Another thing that uh, usually causes a little bit of concern is these air bubbles. So the air oh. bubbles uh, occluding the view while you're doing rexes. Uh, yeah. I mean this is, is of course for youngsters. Par Haan, bolo. Yeah, Dr. Sudip, what to tell? Yeah. Yes, Sudip, go ahead, please. So your incision is what we are watching, Sudip. Yeah, so incision is, I actually the first part is vertical. And if you see, I'm not holding my blade like this when I do this. I'm actually holding it vertically. So that's so the first plane. That is perpendicular and then you're going in and now dipping in. Now dip in and again flatten it. If you keep dipping it down, you'll get that triangle with the chevron which was shown in the morning. Okay, fantastic. That's very good. Very nicely, so clearly demonstrated. And then sort of, uh, just uh, again, Pankaj, can you hold, uh, can someone hold the mic uh, to Sudip uh, closer? Yeah, it's quite close, Dada. There is a little bit problem the mic in between goes off. Ha, ha, ha. And the other thing is this lady, I don't normally hold my eye, but she's sort of moving around. That's the reason I don't think even I can uh, manage this part well. So. so I usually prefer to go through the side port and use a needle. So these needles uh, also have been bent and sent by my girl from there, summer girl. And usually I prefer about a five millimeter axis. Maybe a little bigger here. Yeah. So again, little bit of hydro, not much. The main thing is decompressing. I do not normally rotate, but I'll do here to show. So it will rotate in there. So I know that it will rotate. Normally I do not. Okay. So that amount of rotation is fine uh, to s understand that uh, the nucleus has dislodged from the cortical aspect and uh, that is good enough for you. Uh, Sudip, there was a very nice paper by Dr. Vasavada where he show demonstrated that if you ro rotate it three times clockwise and three times anti-clockwise, it strips off a large amount of cortical matter and that helps in the less of PCO. So he correlated the PCO formation <laughs> with the stripping of the cortical matter uh, with the hydrodissection as well as the rotation of the nucleus. But do go ahead, Sudip. That's quite a large uh, sharp chopper I, you're using. Is it a blunt tip or is it a sharp? Uh, Pankaj? Yes, sir. Yes, it is sharp chopper basically. Uh, short? This is not the Mohan Rajan chopper. It's slightly longer than that. And what I would want to show here is not maybe what I normally do, but something which is reproducible. Very good. So sort of, it's a hard cataract. I will trench the center, make it into a sort of crater which anyone can crack after that. So you can sort of reduce your vacuum and flow rates. And I don't because I know my tip won't get occluded. I'm not uh, burying it. So, uh, um, uh, Sudeep will be interested to know what the parameters are like. 
Somebody so, can tell, uh, tell them. I really don't know myself because I didn't tell them. Yeah, 340 you. vacuum, 34 floor rate, 50 power, occlusion micropulse mode. And uh, this machine is which machine? Galaxy Pro Orbit. Galaxy, Galaxy Pro Orbit. Okay. I think now that we have Saurav over here, we just had a little bit of feedback. So the, he was using a 2.8 tip. Now that, the flow parameters will be very different from a 2.2 tip. And this is a 2.2 tip if I'm not wrong. And uh, this, you will see no surge. With the same parameters. Yeah, so basically I've trenched the center. Yeah, so. I've gone through the uh, posterior plate almost. Now I just hold it and I do a chop again. So I hold it. Now I shift to vacuum. And this tip will go in. There you are. And then see, you no see surge. my right hand doesn't move at all. And I'm doing it in slow motion. And then I rotate. I will just keep chopping bits off. I do not divide it into hemi-nuclei, then subdivide and all. So I'll keep dividing this into sort of six or eight pieces. And you see my right hand is almost stationary. Yes. Very, very stable. It's like I ask people with the chop vegetables, do they move both the hands? So one holds the vegetable, the other hand cuts. Yeah. It's the same thing here. Hello, hello. But you have to watch out that you don't the anterior capsule. And if I use the small chopper, I really won't be able to go deep into the nucleus. So it will just sort of tilt the nucleus, the top of the nucleus, and won't really chop it completely. Yeah, so... Uh, and I have sort of, the endonucleus is not there. This has come out of the bag, so I'll just remove it. But look at the fantastic stability. I'm amazed. See. And I have to admit that this is not a machine, we have it, but uh, I don't use this machine. I don't use this machine regularly. I mean, I don't there is no post-occlusion surge at, at all over here. Now I can see? Shift to a so it's a tip a which matters. <laughs> and actually what Dr. Sudeep showed beautifully was, once you get that first chop right through the nucleus, that means you will not have the central core. Uh, I mean, hard nuclei, which is, that's a problem. So if, you, if the hard nucleus where you have the central core, if you keep dividing it into fragments like that and go radially, then there's a problem that each fragment is stuck to the central core. So if you got that first chop right through across diametrically, then your jo job is more than half done. So yes. holding, the, holding the sharp chopper at this stage will be difficult. I mean, it's dangerous. So I'll shift it to... Uh, uh, so now, dialer uh, and Dr. basically Sudeep I'm protecting the cornea by keeping the dialer in yeah. front of the nucleus. And keep the all other pieces in the back. I think fantastic. And again you see my takeout tip is hardly moving at all. It just stays in one place in the center which is the deepest part of the anterior chamber. The, yeah, sleeve is the tip is different or sleeve is different? Tip is different? This is a smaller tip? Ah, okay. So that was a bigger so now gauge. Faco tips. Now shift to so we have seen the beautifully yeah. done nucleus removal. Nice chop, nice holding, not moving the right hand where he was holding the probe. Only the left hand was chopping. So one hand you pick the nucleus, other hand you start chopping. It's a proper chopping like a chopping board, what we do it. And once nucleus is out, now we are going to have a bimanual cortical aspiration. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I prefer bimanual, not for Hello. any particular, Hello. just Hello. table I'm used Hello. to. It. It's something I started with when I started FACO in 98. So the excellence of your surgery, we understand, uh, Sudeep, you have not even put in uh, viscoelastic, methyl cellulose. No, my viscoelastic is only right at the Hello. beginning for Hello. my uh, rectus. Yeah. After that, I don't use uh, viscoelastic at all. Excellent, excellent. Uh, that's uh, uh, one take home that we do. And uh, the other is, of course, uh, you came in with your FACO uh, probe and uh, then Hello. once in Hello. and once out. That's it. Yeah. So. That is the other reason. There's no reason to come in and out. As long as you are in, your anterior chamber is well formed. So it really doesn't make many, uh, much sense to me to use viscoelastic all the time. And uh, uh, lens. Hello. Lens. Hello. So now he will, he will put the lens under the irrigation. Yeah. It's a basically the supra, sup, it's a supra in focus 
Edof lens by from the Upper Swami. So it's basically beautiful Super. Edof lens, Indian Upper Swami Edof lens. What we are going to have in this eye, and the machine was also by the Upper Swami Galaxy Pro Orbit, and we have seen so nice, steady machine. I have never used this machine probably, but the way Dr. Sudeep has operated from this machine, it's so beautiful, excellent. Okay, let me just see. Yeah, so this is the top. So this is basically based on uh, the C cartridge of Alcon, and this lens also uses lens. I mean, it gives. So this is the Edof lens, I believe. Yeah, it's the Edof lens. So right. It's a supra foam in focus. The injector is exactly like the C cartridge because it even fits into the Monarch 2 injector. Uh, basically, it's a AMO uh, cartridge where he is using and uh, uh, putting the lens. So probably with all the good ca good cartridge and injector system, yeah, with the good cartridge and injector system, you can put all the lenses, whether it's the upper Swami lens or whether it's the Alcon lens or AMO or any kind of lens. So. That's not a limitation, so you can use the way you are, you, uh, you are used to in routine practice. There's nothing wrong in that. So now, Dr. Sudeep. So this is not their own injector. They have their own injector which are used. Yeah. Which is uh, sort of a copy of the C cartridge and it fits into the Alcon injector. So basically I have the irrigation in one uh, side port. This lock, this is 2.8, I'm used to sort of a 2.2 and then the front haptic just goes into the back. Then give me a dialer. So in hydrophilic lenses, I would have just uh, pushed the lens in. Hydrophobics are very rigid, so if I push it down on the iris, it might cause iris dialysis. So I just hold the haptic optic mans in and just leave it in. <coughs> yeah, so this is, you can see that ring in the center. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, we can see the ring in the center. Now, if and we compare really it with the VVT, the VVT's uh, central core, that is a lot smaller than what we have here in this one. So, uh, Sudeep, we have used this uh, supraphobe uh, EDOF before as well. This is no halos and glares, and the central zone is also refractive 1.3 mm zone. And with the add power of 3.25, and the rest zone uh, 4.7 is absolutely again refractive and progressive manner, sir. And hydrating okay. the wounds. And other things actually, I would like to show outside if it's possible the way I hold my instruments. So basically, if I lift it up, I don't know if you can see, I hold the Excellent, cannula. very nice. I always hold the cannula. Excellent. In case it slips, it will never ever go into the eye. Okay, uh, I think uh, we have Dr. Shugatopal uh, on the uh, talk and uh yeah, we'll have two quick talks by one by Dr. Shugato and another by Dr. Shudipta. So, uh, thank you very much. So, I'll be talking on uh, how to manage posterior polar cataract steps for the beginner computer. Uh, so, uh, for the beginners when we are doing uh, posterior polar cataract, what we mo mainly concerned about that the PC will be Can we have silence in the audience, please? So, uh, what we are mainly concerned about, whether the PC will open, whether we will drop the nucleus, and we forget about uh, all the other steps. So, the most important things to remember for the beginner is every step of every focal surgery is important, whether it's PPC or anything else. So, now I'm going to my, it's a video-based talk. Now, look at the uh, instrument I'm holding, the side fork. I am doing a topical FECO, I am holding the side port in the wrong direction. Whenever you are doing a topical FECO, you should always press the cutting edge of the side port on the upper side because if a patient tries to blink, he will move the eye upward and I am not holding the eye. So, so keep a look, I am going in and at the very moment the patient moves the eye. So what happens? We have a big side port. So we have to avoid that. We have strategy. And what happens? The side port wound link, whether it's a PPC or any cataract, the pupil will progressively become smaller and you will end up in problems. So the take home message is concentrate with your wound construction so that you are not having problem. Now while doing a FECO, I don't hold the eyeball. I go in with the keratome inside the capsule that I'm doing for the last 20 years and then 
doing the rexis. It's nothing different when you are doing a PPC. Here I have good rectal elimination, so I haven't stained the hello, capsule, hello, hello, and I'm doing the rexis with a uh, polypurcate forceps. Only thing, hello. try to keep the forceps uh, rexis slightly smaller size, so that uh, if you have to put a sulcus lens, you can do post, uh, you can do the uh, capture of the uh, rexis margin. So uh, that's how I normally do the axis again on the second side also. Same thing, you have to able to repeat the hello, steps. Hello. So I go in with the keratome, inside the capsule, raise the flap and then go ahead with the axis and hello, try hello. to keep the axis slightly smaller. Now regarding hydro dissection and delineation, beginners shouldn't do hydro dissection. Hello. Hello. Actually hello. we shouldn't hello. be doing hydro dissection at all. There are several ways of separating and what I am doing with a spatula, I am separating the anterior capsule from the cortex so that when I am later stage, when I am removing the cortex, it becomes easier. You can, what you can do, you can inject a little bit of fluid as well uh, in the substance. So instead of hydrogelin uh, dissection, you are doing pockets of hydrogelination as I am doing in this video. So there are several hello. ways, so these are the hello, two ways I am doing. Hello, hello. Can you keep the OT mic off please? Now regarding the nucleus management, uh, soft cataract you can do hydro delineation and take the nucleus out is easy. But what happens in harder cataract, harder PPC? Harder PPC where you haven't done hydro dissection, you cannot rotate the nucleus, so what I do is basically uh, without rotating the nucleus, I do the FECO. Here I have made a small uh, uh, chop and now I have tilted the FECO tip in a different direction and take a small uh, um, uh, pizza pie out. Once you have done that, what I'll do next, I'll still till the uh, FECO tip further and try to get another piece. So that's what I'm doing. So, so far I haven't rotated the nucleus at all. Just by rotating the FECO tip, I'm getting the uh, FECO chop and taking the nucleus out. So at this stage, I have managed to take the half of the nucleus out. So I know even if I drop the nucleus now, I have to pay half only to my retinal surgeon because I have taken half of the nucleus out. <laughs> now what I'm doing, I'm teasing the nucleus, the other half, teasing it with the FECO tip and again doing the chop and remove the nucleus. So this is important when you are doing harder cataract, you shouldn't be rotating because then you can open up the PC. Now once you have taken the nucleus out, I am sure all the PGs they know that you have to keep the chamber form, so go in uh, two, three more minutes, Shubhinda. So go in with your viscoelastic and form the chamber. Because if you take your uh, FECO tip out, the chamber collapses and it can open up. And the next thing I'm doing is basically with, uh, I'm doing a little bit of hydro dissection of the uh, cortex now with the, with the um, uh, viscoelastic. But make sure it doesn't go past the posterior collar. So I'm going in, it's like a flower petal, you are lifting the thing up and th then it becomes easy to take it out. So I'm doing that now with a little bit, and now I'm removing it, and you can notice in the left hand, instead of my uh, second instrument, I'm keeping the visco in my hand so that I can pump in visco whenever required to keep the chamber form. So uh, once the thing is done, it's much easy to form the chamber, come out, and do the complete the surgery. So while doing IA, Again, it's nothing different. Here the pupil has gone smaller. So why I'm showing this is, you can, if you are using bimanual, you can use the second instrument to move the iris and get a, a good a vision of the, where the cortex is. This is an old video where I was fool enough, after removing the cortex, I was fool enough to try to polish the capsule. So never polish a PPC. It will cause hazard. So I was full enough to polish that and it, the capsule opened up. But I was lucky enough, it didn't open up much, so I could manage putting the eye well in the bag. And <coughs> the last thing, 
when you are doing PPC, you have to be prepared that the posterior capsule can open up and if it opens up, you have to have strategies of managing that. And here, the posterior capsule has split open. Now, you can see in initially my second hand piece, cannula, irrigation cannula is probably in the right position, but, and I am going very slow to remove the cortex from the bag. Till now, there is no vitreous, but later on, the vitreous actually came out in this case because accidentally I hydrated the vitreous with the irrigation cannula. So these are the things which you have to keep in mind while managing the opening up of the PC. So you have to be slow, the flow has to be less, and so that you can put the lens in the bag. And don't hesitate or you should rather use uh, Tramsinone to uh, stain, the cap, uh, stain the vitreous so that you can do adequate vitrectomy. And I also, here you can see my cannula has gone uh, in the middle and hydrated the vitreous. But anyway, I cannot forward the thing, I have one more minute. And so uh, then, as I was saying, once you have put the lens, use uh, Tramsinone to stain the capsule to do vitrectomy. And also I use pilocarpine because pilocarpine uh, actually uh, makes the pupil round and you can make out if there is any vitreous strand there and then you can put air bubble and close the surgery. So hopefully uh, for the PGTs these few steps will be helpful and uh, will take home surgical tips. Thank you. Thank you Sagato. Thank you very much. Very beautiful. Thanks a lot for nice talk sir. Now Dr. Sudip is ready for the second surgery. Can you hear me, Subinda? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you very clearly. Yeah. And we can see you also. Oh, wow. That's nice. I can't see you. You can see me at least. That's what matters. <laughs> so now Dr. Sudeep is ready with the surgery. Thank you, sir. Pankaj, what uh, Subhan meant by he's able to see you He's able to see you with your mask below your nose yeah. as well. So that's why so you are able to... So put your mask on over your nose, please. Yeah, but then voice, you won't hear the so nice, crystal clear voice <laughs> if I put my mask your on. Your voice dur dur tik sunai padta hai. <laughs> so, now everything so, is all set. Good. Hello, am I audible? Now yes, I... yes Sudeep, go ahead. Okay, so this is a much harder cataract not well dilated. Is there uh, intracameral adrenaline or anything? Phenocaine is there. So phenocaine is okay. So give me phenocaine first after the side port. No, no, side port. I have to make the side port anti. Give me forceps. Forceps. You don't know. So this is an absolute uh, rock. Yes, it is under topical, is it not? No, no, no. This is as for a block because it wasn't very well dilated also. I see. Okay. So I'll use the phenocane now. Then I'll use blue. I don't think it will dilate more than that. Yeah, actually adrenaline sometimes works better than the phenocaine. So was that pilocard because it's going No, that was uh, epit, I mean uh, adrenaline, I don't know whether it's epitrate or whatever. Partho, don't give him jitters now. <laughs> so I don't uh, really ever inject uh, wash with saline, but then I would advise uh, juniors to do that because you have to sort of go blind to the other limbus and inject. But one reason I don't use uh, BSS to wash is the pupil really comes down after that. Yes, yes. So again the vertical entry, then go in as much as you want and then just dip down a bit till you see and then go in. Other thing you see is you'll never see me do this when you're entering. It'll be straight. When you do this side to side movement you actually get a wound which is bigger than you want. That we are required to do only when we reuse our blade. Blunt blade. You need visco. We use so you need to do that only when it's blunt. When it's uh, straight. So you see this is straight 
everything is sort of straight. The inner edge is also straight and that is very necessary to uh, create a good wound. Then again I go through the side port. This I'll make it as big as possible because sometimes when you're trying to chop these hard cataracts, our uh, chopper can cut the excess margin. So I'm trying to do everything in slight slow motion. And that is done. Okay, now I'll, I didn't actually hydrate. Again, I won't use Visco at this stage. It's not necessary. All my maneuvers will be within the back. There will be a long chopper there. So this is again a long chopper. This is 2.8 I think. Looks like a 2.8. No, this looks like a 2.2 I think to us. Or maybe, I don't know. 2.8. 2.8, yeah. is it? Okay. It's 2.8. Because I'm used to 2.2. This is way bigger than that. So here I have to really make a big crater and uh, again like I said this is something what I would show in a live surgery is not what senior surgeons, very experienced surgeons can do but what others can also try and emulate. So a direct chop can yeah. give rise uh, to Sudeep, zonal dialysis. can I just dialysis. request the upper guys or you to just work on the flow rate because is going to bother you. Saline, saline on the cornea. So I'll rotate it a bit and then a pupil is sort of coming down in this despite everything I expected that. Now it's okay. There's no fluctuation now. So, uh, Sudeep, we do see that you're using a trick. You have not put in the side port so that the leakage from yes. the anterior chamber is as less as possible. Yeah. And that and keeps the pupil at bay as well. And so the iris sort of tends to come into the side port if I yes, do that. quite true, quite true, yes. So, till I actually chop, I will do that. Can I use uh, adrenaline sister? So if you see my FECO tip will not actually come out of the eye at all. Even if I use adrenaline, viscoat, whatever. Uh, however, at this stage, Sudeep, uh, yeah. uh, would you like to use a little bit of viscoat, chondroitin sulfate? Not at this stage, when I start removing the pieces. Okay. So I no. stop my irrigation and I'm injecting adrenaline. Now I go back to... So because now all my movement is within the bag, right? It doesn't make any sense using uh, viscoat, chondroitin sulfate, uh, sodium hyaluronate. Basically to uh, increase the size of the pupil, the chondroitin sulfate. It doesn't stay very much with especially a 2.8, I doubt it will stay. So it didn't chop very well. I'll move to some other place. I'll probably shift to hooks. Do they have hooks? I'll, I think it's safer to use hooks. Visco, HPMC. <laughs> so, you know, Sudeep, what uh, Subban conveniently did is, just as you mentioned hooks, he gave the mic back to me. No, VHEX uh, won't stay in this because when I use viscoelastic, it sort of becomes bigger than the size of the... <laughs> but I think, Sudeep, I think that's the right thing that you're going to do and I think that's a learning point yeah. for all of us that... So, uh, I use a diamond configuration, so my first one will be just behind my main wound in a different, it's in the sclera. 
the other one will be just opposite. All of these are very scleral wounds because I don't want to lift up the iris yeah. too much. And these so, are very small yes, entries. Small incisions and uh, scleral as well. Yeah. So that is so that it is in the plane as close as to the iris, iris as possible. Yes. You know, all no, these repetitions are because whole. of our youngsters Box. who are here. Box. Box, iris, iris hooks, give me that whole box. So for iris hooks, that's very key, you know. You have to retract that stopper all the way behind, otherwise you'll be very embarrassed. You, you've just gone three millimeters and then the stopper is there, and then you don't know where to go front or behind. So you, yes, so all the stoppers have to be retracted well behind so that you can now go in very easily. So I think uh, for those of you think that I have uh, no experience with iris hooks, well, I, ha I probably... <laughs> I have contributed significantly to the development of these iris hooks, which are from Madhu Instruments. Uh, Amit Gupta will wait for, vouch for that. So here, I have to be very careful that I don't hold yes. the, so that, the capsule margin. So here, he had the privilege of having a trepan blue over there, staining. So that makes it a lot easier. Otherwise, you probably inject a little bit of viscoelastic under the pupil margin to make sure that it's lifted off. And now once, See, while yeah. I'm holding one, I won't try to hold it here. I'll yes. come here. Use that tent. Yeah. And then pull You get it that out. correct plane. So once you've got one plane, you will not make a mistake with any of the others. Yes, I think Sudip chose a longish incision because the people were small. And that's why the wound is a little bit hydrated and we have a little bit of uh, fuzziness over there. Yeah, that is true. That's, uh, I mean, that is actually, a, I must start, it's a mistake for me. The thing is, I'm, again, I don't do any surgeries with 2.8. It's all my surgeries are 2.2. Yes, I think this should have been it. Yeah, so it should have been. I, when I made it, I realized that it's uh, too square. You can't do a square wound with a 2.8. You can have a square wound with a 2.2. Yes. Not with a 2.8. But then, uh, I, it's like almost never that I'll use a... Uh, so 2.8. Just for the information of people over here, my last iris hooks. So now it's sort of a diamond. If I put my iris hooks on this side, the iris would have been tented up in front of my FACO. So no, uh, the visco is still there. So, so I, I need use, the handpiece. Uh, no, no, I don't need visco. I need the handpiece and the chopper. I do. And when I asked Dr. Saurabh to present on iris hooks, he re flatly refused. <laughs> he said, I don't remember when I have asked <laughs> We were in an instruction course together. <laughs> Yes, yes. So that's key. That's a key question from Dr. Deepa. Uh, what's the advantage of giving a sub-incisional iris hook? So you make sure. Yes, that's clear. Basically, you're giving a sub-incisional, sub-main incision. Oh, all the, are you talking about all the hooks? Okay, so if you're doing more, going more yeah, towards the sclera, you're trying to keep the, the plane of the pupil closer to its original plane. Others will get elevated to the limbal plane. So other thing so is, I managed to get a chop, but it won't be complete. I won't really stretch it too much with the first one. I'll probably come back again. So wh what I do with iris hooks is that, so uh, around the incision I take more scleral, because I don't want the iris tenting up while doing FECO or while IL insertion. Uh, but no, no. on the other so parts, you can airport, do a corneal airport. one because airport. we are not bothered about that. Because With a uh, scleral incision, one issue can be that uh, there will be chemosis around. So if you are doing it on topical, sometimes this, the fluid goes uh, in the subconjunctal space and you will have a chemosis. So yeah, that has started happening. So when I am doing on topical, I generally use maybe one scleral for the iris hook which is near the incision to avoid tenting up near the main incision while others I will place clear corneal or limbal. So that can be midway in between. So the problem with uh, a little bit uh, when you go posterior is the chances of having a little bit of chemosis over there. Yeah, that's there but it's, already it's there, okay, it's so not too much. So, so there you have to be a little careful. The Do we other have way visco or supra coat or anything? So the other way of going about this problem is huh. you Go no, no, not uh, HPMC. Incisions uh, more diagonally. And, uh, that is the -coat. external part is limbal away from the conjunctiva and the internal part is much deeper. 
Yeah, so, so, yeah, steep. So, you go, okay, go and give get... Give me the uh, yeah, dialer. So, then you have the people plane again more posteriorly. You're not delivering to the limbus plane. So, I'll try to just remove the central bit if I can, the endonucleus. Basically creating the space. Yeah. So, I'll see which piece I can sort of remove. Actually, yeah, this hard cut track, if you have a little bit space, it becomes uh, easy to manage. So, that's what uh, he's trying to create. And he's got the nice place, but still, posterior plate is very dense and not giving way. And lot of cases, you can actually get a button out that I'm not able to do here. Yeah. It's absolutely le leathery. Yeah. Actually, you see this color plate. of uh, lens. People say black. Black is not actually that difficult. It's yes. this slightly this, this yellowish brown, brown which is the most leathery. So I don't want to pull out because the zonules also can be weak here. So this, I think the next piece should come out. Yeah. Yeah, this. Yes. I think this is very leathery cataract. So, like uh, Dr. Sudeep sir is showing that how to try to chop it. There are two no, methods. One method is to do a very, very deep trench to begin with and do a terminal chop. I think that works in most of the cases, but sometimes like you are little bit yeah. uh, hesitant to go deep in the center. Uh, what you can do is the floor petal uh, kind of FACO, where uh, in the left hand, it's better to use a blunt chopper. So you go around that petal, go behind and then cut it in between your uh, uh, FACO tip and uh, that blunt chopper, but if you are using sharp chopper, then it's not possible to do floor petal. So, yeah, you, you have to just crush, and once you, uh, you know, two third of the floor petals are consumed, then the rest of the piece is small, so you can float. Then so you I'm basically cut the sub chopping them. them. I had these chops, but I'm making them even smaller with my Sinski. Yeah, right. So that uh, it's, I'm not uh, putting too much of pressure on the zone on the zonules. I think one thing to uh, hear the demonstration of patience while you know doing these cataracts. If you get impatient at this stage, you may have issues. Yeah, but that's as, true. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Sudeep sir is rightly showing he is patiently dividing and trying to ch uh, you know chip off few pieces so that the nucleus gets smaller. And once it gets smaller, I think it will be easier to then emulsify. Another technique is the multi-level cho chopping, which Dr. Basawara describes. So you chop and then uh, disengage, go deeper and then again chop so that you are at its out. I've uh, actually done that but I can't just separate. This is very rare not being able to uh, divide the posterior plate at all. Yeah, that's something which is very rare and these are not the cases for the live surgery but Dr. Sudeep is managing very well, very that's patiently. Right. And not uh, something that you know. I think Sudeep you're doing a great job. Uh, great. It's a test yes. of patience. Uh, especially yes. in a life surgery. It's excellent. <laughs> Very easily, slowly. Just, you just have no choice but to just nibble at it probably. And uh, because my wound was not ideal, I was sort of Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, this is the importance of having these uh, partial pies. So the small pies which are not extending right to the center oh, or right to the posterior plate. And yet, now that the posterior plate is dislodged, it is just coming up and rolling in. So, the posterior plate, which is the most uh, difficult part and uh, gives way last, is what uh, Sudeep is doing now. And uh, it's floated out and uh, the posterior pole, uh, plate comes in last. Again, remembering the fact that uh, excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Very Finally, nice. nucleus is out. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Beautiful. Very and nice. there is hardly any cortex.
<laughs> just uh, look like I'll actually a... put the IOL in first and then I'll do the IA because again I will tell the juniors it's safer in these. Yeah. So IA. So you want to put the... Uh, there's hardly lens, any cortex lens, anyways. Lens. It's there's hardly, hardly any, any cortex. cortex. Actually that everything was nuclear. And, and now this, are... this wound hydration will actually that disappear because it's not actually an SK, it's just uh, a wound and hydration yes. uh, which has gone between the decimates uh, cut fun. edge and the uh, and the uh, stroma. As basically, in this case, AIS is getting sold to MNC. Yeah, in this case, they are going to put the super fob uh, yes. lens. By yes, the super fob is an imported lens, apparently. Yes, it's a basically imported lens uh, from the upper upper group. Yes. And It's a beautiful lens. Yes. And it's a nice hydrophobic lens, and that's what Dr. Sleep is going to put in this case. So I basically, once and I load, I just push it with the forceps to see that it's moving. That way you know that it's not caught in the flanges. If your haptics are caught in the flanges, it won't move. And if you try to inject that, you'll rip off. We had a word for that. Like you have TDS, we used to call this HDS, haptic deduction at source. So, <laughs> now, yes. So it's basically yellow lens, what uh, it is. Lens. Uh, Superfob is not preloaded, so that's the only difference. Yeah, it's not preloaded. Preloaded, so you have to use the butterfly cartridge and you'll have to use a 2.8 incision. Yeah, you have to use a 2.8. Suprafob is preloaded. Superfob yeah. is not, not preloaded. Suprafob is preloaded. Manji. Actually, I only came to know today that region is coming preloaded. I didn't know it was preloaded because I haven't it used region in a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, upper some a lot of lenses are now preloaded lenses. That's good. A lot of changes are happening. So that's gone in. I'll just now just try and remove so, whatever. So removal of I the iris hooks for uh, again our younger colleagues over here. And here you have to be very careful that you don't hold the anterior capsule because immediately it'll just come off in these uh, cataracts. So we'll see what technique he uses. There are many ways to skin the cat. Okay, now I need forceps. I won't use viscoelastic to remove the hooks either. So you just have to push these. Yes, so advance it a little. It's and then turn it over. Well, you can just yank it out also. Yeah, so it's already pointing forward. All you have to do is sort of point it over the... Uh, oops. So you can turn it and align it to the incision or yeah. even if otherwise you and just pull just it. And then just turn it over and it will come out. Because it's, it's made of uh, polypropylene so that's going to stretch, uh, extend, it's very flexible. These are very, these are nice actually, these are really slim. These are by Madhu, is it? Yeah, these are from Madhu, I think these are They're very, very uh, slim. 5 nice. uh, or 4-0 po polypropylene. 4, oh yeah. Five, more like five, it's very five. thin. Okay, so that's done. And now I just hydrate. So, yes, so Shobhik has asked me a very uh, relevant question for those who think that I'm, I'll, uh, uh, this thing with uh, BX is my interest. I just looks was a major interest for me and... Uh, Again, I'm holding the cannula. Madhu instruments, uh, when they were uh, changing over to the materials, this material was suggested by me. Otherwise, they were making PMMA ones. And ever since that time, we, were ha we had only Grishaba ones over here in India. They were very expensive. Apasami had PMMA ones. So I suggested that they use polypropylene. And ever so since I don't have to hydrate uh, those sterile things at all. It will stay closed. And it's a nice tight wound. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful surgery. And a big round of applause, Sudeep. You've shown us a test of patience. And Great. from Sudeep, we will now move to Sudipta. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dada. Thank you. Bank thank you, Pankaj. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it is an honor to speak in front of such uh, an august gathering. Can you just switch over with <laughs> what that? Uh, are, we, are we here? Are we, that's, that, yeah, that's yes, yes. No, no, no. This is a different one. The slides, please. Can you switch over to the slides?
मुझे भी तो एक्सटेंडेड हो गया था। हाँ, कुल्ला वाला लगा था। ये वाले लोग। हाँ, ना। ये माउस से देखा जाता है एक बार। Let's give it to। दो तो अपन आज से नोट एक्सटेंड हो गया था तो। so my topic is intraoperative floppy Irish syndrome or IFIS and half of my job has been done because we had beautiful discussions. If you can please keep the OT mic off, thank you. And uh, because we were talking of Irish hooks and saw beautiful demonstration of Irish hooks. Now when we go to uh, what are intraoperative floppy Irish syndrome, it's a variant of small pupil syndrome. And it has been observed during cataract surgery in some patients currently or previously treated with alpha-1 adenoceptor antagonists like tamsulacin. Can you please keep the OT mic off, sir? Uh, can you please keep the OT mic off, sir? OT mic off, please. And tamsulacin is a drug which is given for urinary problems, especially for prostatic hypertrophy. IFIS was first described by Chang et al. and it comes a progressive intraoperative pupil constriction, billowing of a flaccid iris trauma and iris prolapse through the surgical incision. Sorry for that grammatical mistake there. IFIS can be prevented and treated by maintaining midrasis and restraining the iris from prolapsing during cataract surgery. And this can be accomplished by mechanically or pharmacologically by treatments and use of intraoperative devices for and also phacoemulsification, fluidic parameter uh, management. So I have a small video which where I'm going to describe, but uh, I'll go fast through it. So this is an IFAS management. I have an audio, but it's not playing as usual. Shugato can probably play that for me. This was a beautiful dilated pupil. Patient had prostatic hypertrophy and was on tamsulosin, but this was a beautiful dilated pupil. So I thought this was my last case. I was very relaxed, doing it nicely, but I used blue dye. So that is what I put that air bubble in, put my blue. And then while I was putting the blue, as I was saying, that this is something very sudden which happened. So that's again, there was a bellowing. Now here one very important point I would like to say that when you have this type of IFIS uh, then it is always better to uh, reposit the Irish from the side and then as uh, you go in I will not talk about how to introduce a BHEC because sir is there how to do it. So this is a beautifully put in uh, dilated pupil which has been put in uh, because of the BHEX that has been put into place and it is very easy to the to the surgery it gives you optimal dilatation I use this method for most of my pupil expert devices that is I use a Irish repositor to glide my phaco probe in and I of course use bimanuals in these techniques so that uh, it is easier for me and use that Irish repositor again to deliver the lens in so this is something uh, that you can do with a BHEX and it is very, very safe in IFIS, gives you a good result, whatever it is. And even in my early stages of BHEX, and there, that BHEX comes out with the same ball dialer as I was used. This is another interoperative small pupil, but here this appeared after my rexus was done, as was discussed here. And sir beautifully demonstrated, Dr. Shudip Dash. Here it is, the small pupil coming out. Maybe my wound was a bit anterior also and that's what I used. I would like to say please repose it through the side port rather than from the main port. And these are the problems that we face. Immediately catching hold of the Irish when we go in or touching the Irish wherever we are trying to manipulate our instruments. So as you can see the fluctuations. So this is a typical IFS. So here in this case I decided for a hook. And this not only opens up, but also prevents the Irish fluctuations, which are a known factor for complications. So that is why we use pupil expanders in case of a uh, IFIS small pupil, or maybe in hands of Shugato, he may not use any expanders. Uh, but I have used a hook. And as the direction, they were saying that it has to go scleral side to, uh, uh, towards the center, preventing uh, touch on the rexus margin, putting a good, a good amount of viscoelastic to separate that plane of your rexus with, see, I, uh, you may use 5 or 4. 
here I chose to have four. I'm again telling you this is a very old video. Now I have changed the positions, but uh, this would also do. And as you introduce the hook, as very correctly uh, Shubhendra has been telling, he used the first one. And uh, once you introduce any one of them, just introduce it and tent it up a little. So life becomes easier for uh, catching hold of the Irish without the Rex's margin for subsequently. And uh, I will sh just show you quickly that uh, this was the position finally. Now here it's very important that you don't overstretch because these Irish is already flaccid. So it will turn a tonic and you'll have problems. Now again I'm using my spatula to glide my FACO tip. Uh, FACO instrument, uh, FACO Pro and, and use any technique. I always prefer the easiest technique that works with all cataracts for me, stop chop in these cases and I would prefer that uh, youngsters also take up this point, whatever works best in your hands. In complicated situations, please use that type of FACO technique. Now, less turbulence is required in these type of cataracts, so reduce your parameters and reduce your turbulence or you might have some other problems which you just missed. There is a Irish hook, if you can see in the upper part, it has dislodged. So this is something which can happen very frequently if the turbulence is more. So you have to have stable parameters, lower down your parameters, go slow and rest of it is not really very difficult. If you go slow, keep your patience like we saw in the previous surgery by Dr. Shudip Dash, beautifully done. And once you can strip off your cortex and then you can also go in with a I will again using your spatula to prevent the iris trauma by the lens. So that's it and uh, thank you. Thank I you, have Shadita. some finer points uh, if you, please. Uh, just a finer point uh, which I want. I wanted to tell you that uh, whenever you are having um, uh, IFIS, the important is how you diagnose it because uh, the history always tells you uh, that you ha uh, may get a IFIS. So a history of tamsulosin or a diabetic patient, history of prostatic treatment, urinary treatment might be taken. Secondly, uh, intracameral anesthetic may be used in between if you are using a topical because when you are using any device in the early stages, you might create some amount of pain. So it's good if you can inject some amount of intracameral anesthetic while you are continuing with these type of procedures. Secondly, use high elastic visco if you can to uh, keep your chamber deep, reduce anterior chamber turbulence as I have mentioned. And uh, finally, if implantation has to be done, take care you don't push pull the uh, rexus margin if a rexus has been done. And finally, intraoperative disengagement may occur. So by accidental iris aspiration. So look out for it, keep less turbulence. Do not overstretch when you are putting in as well as when you are removing it, be very gentle. Otherwise the pupil might, the iris might become a tonic. Thank you very Thank you. much for Thank your you, patient Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, I think the OT is ready, so I'll skip my talk and we'll go to the OT directly. If the OT is ready, I can, uh, Pradeepda, you can uh, I think start off. There's no point keeping the patient waiting. Yeah, Pradeep Mohanto. Hello. Yeah, can you Am hear? Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you're audible. Yeah. So, OT, everything is ready. Yeah. Pradeep Dha is ready. And, yeah. So, no, uh, like you want us to start the OT or you, Dr. Sudita wanted to finish the no, talk? No, Sudita has finished. I could do something on BX and I, I resource, but uh, are you if you're ready, you can Yeah, we, we are ready. We'll do one case and then. Haan, uh, the, the karlo, can, na, karlo, karlo. Yeah, ahead, just yeah. start. Yeah. Don't keep the patient waiting. That's yes. priority. So, now just drape the sister. Sister, drape the eye. So, Dr. Pradeep Mahanto is going to be operating. So, while uh, Sudita, we are just uh, getting back to your talk, a few comments. Uh, IFIS, every case that goes onto your table is a potential IFIS candidate. Antihypertensives are known to cause IFIS. So, your every practically alternate patient is on antihypertensives. Cardiac medicines are all known to cause IFIS. Okay. So, the list of causes of IFIS is really adding on every day, it's endless. Second, you said that uh, one of those hooks got dislodged. The reason that got dislodged is there was a movement of the eye and the hook was getting knocked off at the speculum and the lid. So one way of going about that is trim the hooks. Beyond the stopper, you can just trim the hooks and you get a lot of movement. Taking it out is not going to be a problem. Yeah. 
we don't want the eyes to be taught you see if you see so so you if you have a a, a, a deep set eye a deep set eye or you need to be see your excursions will be Hello, Suvin. Recently, I met a neurosurgeon, and I was just yes. asking Yes, now, Suvinda, can you hear us? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. And we can see also that the pupil is about five, five and a half millimeters, maybe max. Maybe four to five. Yeah, four. Uh, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, Pradeepda, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Though the pupil is okay, but during emulsification of the pieces, going to be small. So I am planning BHEX right now. The I uh, don't ask to go to what he would have used in this case. Ask him what he would have used if it was mother-in-law. No, right. then, then we'll know what is happening at home. We'll ask you the next day. Are you people like you this? Term die under the iris. Is the picture clear? Yes, absolutely clear. This is HPMC. Shunle to ki bollo ekante ke shogo to. Just uh, some uh, under the iris. Make some room. Sorry, uh, we'll be switching over to Bangla sounds in a while. And it's not very far from Marathi. Yeah. And now, here goes the VHEX. Shubhan and Na, Shubhan and Jantra. surprised to know that they have started using in ladies also because I was asking about the history of tempsilation only for males for gents yes. so that was the first flange which went in and the second flange so yes so uh, now that was actually uh, not how the BX comes there is a lid also over there and you just put a drop of viscoelastic over that and then you uh, push glide that uh, leading flange into the AC and you tuck alternate flanges under the pupil margin and you get a 5.5 pupil. Now this, if you feel that the hexagon is elongated, you can just push it with two Kuglin hooks and it will get a more regular hexagon. And you can actually move it around also if you want like a picture frame. Yes, yeah, so a little bit of, initially when you want to tuck the flanges, you want a little bit of viscoelastic under the pupil margin and now once the visco BX is in place, you can just put uh, a viscoelastic on top of the in the AC to kind of flatten the iris to the capsule. Nasal. So that's a beautifully executed rexus in the presence of VX. And of course, I must disclose, I have a financial interest in this. So now we have seen the beautiful rexus. It's a perfect size rexus. So Vinda, what do you comment? Uh, what, what, what for? Yeah, about the rexes. It's a beautiful, perfect size rexes. Yes, and that's got nothing to do with BX. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, that's why I asked your comment. So I'm not speaking on that. <laughs> I'm silent. I choose to be silent. <laughs> so now, viscoelastic and... Yes, yeah, so the flanges here, see, it doesn't really matter which way, where, where your, whether the flange anterior to the iris... Actually, it, uh, it doesn't really matter whether the flange is anterior to the iris within some incisional. It, it really so now we are, we are seeing something different. Yes, yes. So where Pradeepda is trying to do the pre-chopping. Pre-chop, yes. So one hand he is fixed, another hand he has just chopped. So we have seen the nice yes. chop. So effortless nice chop without... And this is Mohanto's pre-chopper, I think. Yes, that's a Mohanto's pre-chopper and Mohanto's uh, trick. With okay. Nice. Did you say prick? Yeah, it's a nice trick. There's no prick just oh, you sorry. don't. You sorry, didn't. we heard it wrong over here. Or maybe I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> so after pea chopping, now the phaco probe has gone inside. 
So what are the settings? What machine we are using? We are using the Ferros or by the Otley. The setting is uh, 450 vacuum, 45 flow rate, and power is I think 65. What we are keeping? That's Pankaj, what the if you ask Pradeep Mahanto, he will tell you we are using a no-name machine right now. There are reasons for it. Pardon? Pardon, Dada? He is using a no-name machine. No-name machine? Eh? Naji. Oh, okay. This is a conference and there are reasons why I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay, fine, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, so, the, see the purpose of a pupil device, whether it's iris hooks or a, BA, a ring, whatever it is, is to actually give you a constant pupil size which does not collapse. It does not meant to stretch it from limbus to limbus. If you are assured, all surgeons who have been doing FACO for some time, if you are assured that you will get a 5.5 people which is not going to come down, you can jolly well do your surgery. So that is what is what you need. So, And the moment you do that, beyond that, you actually have a distorted people which is cosmetically awful looking in the next day. So, uh, yes, I do have a bias towards BX and I think most surgeons who have started using BX have a bias. Uh, but uh, there is nothing wrong with using iris hooks, whatever keeps you comfortable and that is what I was going to speak and probably after this uh, uh, particular f uh, surgery I will very briefly speak on that. So he is using a Simcoe cannula, that is his choice and I think he's, uh, he prefers that to uh, do the IA with Simcoe. See again we can improvise and use whatever techniques we have been used to and bring it into the new technology. Uh, whatever keeps the surgeon comfortable and gives consistent results. That's what more important. Yeah. Uh, not really. The AC is formed. So, so the, the B hex is 0 0.075 millimeters. In this case, so what happens is when you have the AC is well formed, then it will not, not come in the way because it's at the pupil plane. It is effectively at the pupil plane. So if the AC becomes shallow, then it's going to come. So it's necessary to keep the AC well formed. Advantage of bimanual, we are removing the cortex effortlessly yes. from both, both so the hands. Or so we can use the Simco also. It's a nice use of Simco, even in the good, nice FICO. So Dr. Pradeep Mahanta is showing his versatility with all, all, all options. Yes. Let's, so let's give him a round of applause. Yeah. That's a wonderful, clean pupil. Now this is uh, upper sum is multifocal lens. So this is a region lens. So this is region. Yes, preloaded. So preferred region. Yes. This is a hydrophobic. Uh, I think it's a uh, diffractive refractive combination. Or probably no, it's it's probably a diffractive and uh, it's got an EDOF component also. It's a, it's synergy. It's I think copy. It's a refractive diffractive combination. Refractive diffractive combination. Okay. Uh, actually, it's a combination of uh, diffractive and refractive both. But so, uh, in central, it has an addition add power of 3.5. So, this yeah, is preloaded. I will explain. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, we claim it gives absolutely speak and span N6 at 33 centimeter and comparatively less halogen glass and yellow chromophore and preloaded uh, multifocal from a Pasami region. Thank you. Thank you. There is hardly any cartridge except for alcohol, which probably gives you 2.2. .2. Very good injector. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, have my, I have my reservation about 2.2 .2 because you stretch it. The Superfo probably has one of the best injectors of anyone. Yes, agree, agree, it's absolutely. extremely good injector. Now see, with the 2.2 you end up stretching a lot. So probably that 2.2 .2 becomes 2.3, 2.4 anywhere with the stretch and that's a mutilated wound. So I'd rather, uh, yeah, so removal is very easy. You just untuck those flanges and actually you can use any which way. Uh, I personally prefer just to disengage the flange which is closest to the incision, draw it centrally and then 
and then you disengage the two notches on either side and then you just pull the device, the trailing flange, the notches actually disengage spontaneously. You don't have to do anything about it. Uh, good question, good question. No, it's a relevant question which people keep asking. In fact, this is a reused one. I can, I can tell you that because this is a, was open housing. The housing has been open. So, uh, yes, as an innovator and as a, a director, owner, director of the company, uh, it is sold as a single-use disposable device. Reuse is off-label. Any surgeon who's using anything off-label should know the implications and should be able to face the court if he's called upon. So, so, reuse, reuse. No, no I got a standard WhatsApp message for this, and I can read it out from there. Uh, this is uh, verbatim from there. So, reuse can lead to underperformance and breakage, for which the surgeon is responsible. Not the company. <laughs> hey, so, anyway, jokes apart. Uh, thank you everybody for all the support. I, I am indebted to my colleagues in ophthalmology in this part of the country and all over the country. Saurabh is one of the heaviest users. Uh, oh, I am really indebted for the immense support that has been provided. Otherwise, it would have never taken start. off from the benches to the clinic. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, Suvinda, you can start your talk. Yes, Dada. yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I would not uh, uh, like to comment here because that's digging my own grave. quickly. Uh, now, the topic was BX versus Iris hooks. Uh, I must disclose I have a financial way. interest. I have disclosed Mike that over and over again. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Dr. Pradeep Mohanta, for this wonderful meeting where we are having fun and learning. A lot of fun, actually. A very informal setting. So, actually, it's more like BX and Iris hooks. No conflict, no confrontation. Okay. So, the basic principle of surgery remains primum non nocere. So first, do no harm. And that depends upon your personal preference. Whatever keeps you comfortable, given the armamentarium of your skill, experience, and the cost to the patient or to your setup. So that is a relevant fact. So we must take that into account. But then fortunately enough, in August 2020, when you we guys were down with COVID, and uh, we did run a survey, online survey, and it was very gratifying for me, and actually came as a big surprise, that of the responders, we had BX being used in 42% and 41% was a close iris hooks, which actually means, and the BX was priced at four times that of iris hooks. And that is really very gratifying. So that was breaking news for me. And what had we done? We had basically actually captured the iris hooks market. What we had done is, and that was again very satisfying that we moved a significant number of surgeons from iris hooks to BX. So why did this happen? Iris hooks do have a downside. So once you move to another uh, uh, device and you have gone through the learning curve, you get more conversant with it, and then you realize that the downsides are relevant. Now surgeons probably couldn't make a, a switch because of the want of a better alternative. The mulligan ring was there, but the cost was prohibitive, and there is a learning curve to it. Okay, so malignant, malignant incomes cost anywhere between 9 to 10K. There could be reuse, but then that doesn't really uh, bring down the costs very much. And there could be breakage, uh, there's a lot of, lot of complications with malignant ring. There is a significant learning curve. So despite the higher pr price, surgeons switched because it was easier, faster, safer, and it, of course, gave you a very elegant results. Uh, now, what are the downsides of iris hooks? M more the incisions, the more the risk of infection. That's given. It may, infection rate may be very low, but then if you have four extra incisions, the chances of infection are higher. There is a chance of over-retraction and sphincter tear, and the corner spaces are wasted. 
We must remember that we are working within the capsular excess. That's all is what we need. Anything more than that is actually a waste. And if you look at it geometrically, it's very simple. There is a wasted space. And that's the BX. The corners are hardly there. So your net, see, if you go into the uh, geometry, if the square device is 6.5 pupil and with the hexagonal device, the 6.5 pupil, you actually have a lot more free areas. The device is much further away from the angle, so it's a lot safer. The other side that we discussed time and again, you're elevating the entire pupil to the limbal plane. So your, your space in the antechamber does get cramped and you have uh, a little uh, crisis over there, especially with the shallow antechamber. And if you're working in a, if your limbal plane is elevated, your chances of endothelial damage is definitely higher. And operating times definitely are higher with the iris hooks. Uh, it's, uh, of course, it's not the first few cases. Once you've done a few BX cases and then you do that, uh, there is, a, this is a paper in the J JCRS. There is another paper in the, uh, in IGO, which is uh, under review. Uh, I was a reviewer for that, so probably that will come out sometime soon. And if you do have a, a disfigured pupil, the chances of glare and halos are a lot more. And with premium lenses, that could be a challenge. A few words about IFIS quickly. IFIS, there are two components that are actually concerning us, meiosis and iris prolapse. What devices do is they provide a constant pupil size, which offers us good visibility and allows us to do safe, safe phaco emulsification. That's something which we must get clear. Iris prolapse, on the other hand, no device actually helps. It's the constitution of the ISIS. It's how bad the IFIS is. How badly the stroma is damaged and the muscles are damaged is the pathological damage. That tells you whether you're going to have iris prolapse or not. So there is no credit to the pupil device when you don't have iris prolapse. It's just a lower grade of IFIS on that day. So right eye may have, you may get away with iris hooks and you'll think that iris hooks is great. You may get away with BX and the next eye you do the same device and you'll be in a mess. So it's, it's basically... So what we need, what kind of device do we need in IFIS is we require small incisions, low vertical profile, and which can exit through the side port. And the BX can exit through a 0.9 mm side port. And actually we can put it in through a 1.2 mm incision as well. That's, uh, that video is there online. So uh, I believe iris hooks and BX are both well suited for IFIS. But then if I am asked for a subluxated cataract or if I'm doing a SFIOL, I'll probably ch definitely choose iris hooks because I can get asymmetric pupil expansion. There's, there is no, ch no choice. And if you're actually struggling with a very, very shallow uh, uh, AC, you may choose to do iris hooks. Uh, if you're interested, I'd encourage you to look up this uh, particular art paper, uh, article that I have on eofta.com on FACO and small people. It's quite exhaustive. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm done. That's short. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, one... Uh, one thing uh, with use of BHEX, uh, usually the iris prolapse is less, of course, with any expansion ring as compared to not using at all. Uh, one of the manuals that I use to avoid iris prolapse, either using BX or is, I call it FECO probe withdrawal manual. So what I do is that at the end of FECO emulsification, when, when I want to withdraw the FECO probe, I stop the irrigation for some time, let the AC get shallow a little bit, and then I remove the probe. Because uh, it's a floppy iris, so it goes with the flow. You know, it's like goes with the flow. So wherever the flow is, yeah. So I think so uh, that manual is quite useful in avoiding it. Uh, Suvinda? Hello? Yes. Suvinda, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Pankaj. Yes, Pankaj. Yes. Over to OT. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, Pratibha was waiting for your uh, clearance. So, Once Pankaj, it's you? Pardon? You operating? No, I am not operating. Pratibha is operating second case. Sudip, okay. No, oh, Dr. Pratibha Pratib Mohanto. Pratib Mohanto, okay. Okay, home ground. Yes, it's a home ground, all set. And just you will see nice six, what we have seen in the last ball. Last ball. Silence in the audience, please. Yeah. So this is just, uh, hello, I am audible, Yes, Suven. yes, Pratibha, you are This loud and clear. This is, uh, is a grade one plus or grade two. This is the uh, ideal case for chop. And I will show my pre-chopper a little bit in detail in this case. So here goes the main session. Uh, the 
OT feed has gone. Yeah, it's back again. Pardon? Yeah, yeah, we're back again. We yeah. had a problem with the OT okay. feed. For uh, staining under the air bubble, uh, the technique to reduce little bit of time is that I use the tuberculin syringe to inject the dye. And what I do is just withdraw a little air before I inject. So as you go in, first the air comes out and with the same go, the dye comes out. So that saves a lot of time. For and in this case, we're going to use eye hands from Down to I Hello. I think uh, the technique uh, Dr. Mohantasar uses using the uh, uterata forceps to do CCC from main incision, I think it is a very tough thing to master. So many times uh, for beginners it's a bit difficult. Uh, but if you have a soft tie and the AC is well filled, I think it works well. But on topical, sometimes this might be a having it's yeah, a because nice AC is shallow and you may have seen. Can you yeah, so we are having uh, this case on uh, uh, this, uh, uh, we are pro I think proposing to put uh, eye hands, uh, eye hands uh, IOL, that's from J&J &J, and uh, it's again a hydrophobic. For those of us uh, who have used eye hands, bilateral eye hands gives the patient a fair amount of near vision and actually uh, though I don't push it, I would push for my patients for multifocal, but then if they don't agree to a multifocal, I push them to eye hands. Uh, can you center that uh, eye a little bit or the microscope a little bit? So, yeah, you need this to is move. the uh, pre-chopper. Yes, we can see the pre-chopper. Huh? Yes. Is it yes. Now? yes, absolutely well centered. This Perfect is the, focus. This is the uh, pre-chopper. This is the sharp edge. Front edge is the sharp edge. Yes. And this is the blunt edge, and this yes. is uh, also blunt, the uh, tip. And it is straight. Uh, the uh, Sohel's pre chopper is curved, but uh, uh, that is patented, and we cannot copy that. So this is just a straight thing. Front edge is sharp, and the back side is curved, uh, blunt. So it goes. I think the difference is the tip, because you said that the tip is blunt. Yes. So in Sohel's chopper, the tip is pointed. Yes, so the tip is pointed and I think sharp. That's an additional safety point with this. Beautifully done. I think this is something. So the second instrument is basically a retainer. It's a ball headed chopper or kind of a retainer which gives the counter uh, force. Uh, yeah. What kind of counter we can take care of that? Yes. Uh, I usually do with soap. Hard cataract. Uh, next case, I have uh, that is the technique I use is submarine chop. Uh, for hard cataract, I don't use this. So, the so we can make four pieces. For that, we have to come out and inject visco again, and then we can uh, divide the other yeah. hemineu. Everything. I think fantastically demonstrated by Dr. Pradeep sir and uh, what I found like as he did after doing right. first chops he again refilled the anterior uh, chamber this and machine I am using is Upper Summit Galaxy Pro Orbit Tip <laughs> What is the size of the tip? The size of the two, tip is 2.8 2.8 so now it's already pre-chopped so straight away he's just removing the piece Devjan is Shemar Chashmat and Imak Pura Desha. Yeah. It's already pre-chopped. Just you have to hold and destroy it. That's all. Yeah. It's already chopped. So 380 vacuum, 36. 
flow rate and 50. Okay. So, uh, I think with the pre-chopping, I had the opportunity to visit Dr. Uh, Akaushi uh, maybe uh, seven years back, six, seven, and I was quite interested in pre-chopping. And as you mentioned, he does it in each and every case, irrespective of type of cataract, small pupil, subluxated, anything, he will just do pre-chop. So he, he is amazing. Uh, but what, when I tried with his, uh, one thing is that you have to use the original instruments always because uh, the instrument given by yeah, it, it is quite different. Second thing is that you have to use a good OVD because uh, when he does it, he does it in one go. Like he just rotates and does, it's not possible with regular OVDs. And you should have a certain sense of, you know, how much pressure you have to put on zonules. And this is something, you know, uh, it's difficult to learn in private practice because you don't want uh, zonular problems in your cases. And what I realized that uh, he developed this technique long back when probably the FECO machines were yeah. not that good. And he primarily dependent on this because uh, he will use, you know, two bottles for the fluid to go in the uh, yeah. Yeah, you're in the catheter. Even he had that force infusions and everything. Even when you, he was using Centurion, he was telling me that the fluid is not enough. I want something, you know, better. He's that fast. He's a gifted surgeon. Gifted surgeon. So he, just yeah. like uh, Dr. Mohanta sir, he has showed, he just chopped everything yeah. and just quadrant removal was like placing the probe at the center and just remove it in Next one. Session, yes. He's a gifted surgeon. He's a gifted With the body, the plans to the. But I think uh, with the ad advent of these uh, very, uh, you know, uh, good machines with uh, nice chamber stability and chops are very fast. They are as fast, fast as, uh, you know, pre-chopping. If you want to really do only fast surgery, without pre-chopping, you can do it. Uh, do it. But uh, probably in some cases where you don't want to do it to go in while chopping, like in case of subluxated cases where you don't want, you know, posterior capsule to fluctuate, posterior chamber to fluctuate, I think it's a good... Uh, manure to learn. I think this is a nice uh, chopper that he has developed which has I additional lens. because with uh, Dr. Sohail's Dr. chopper Sarah. the tip was sharp. Yeah. So it was little bit you know you were hesitant to go ahead with pre-chop. I think this can be used and tried by us. Yeah, so this is an eye hands lens and it's got an anterior surface modification which is a little more convex than what is in the thickness uh, uh, regular lens. So uh, Thickness one has got a. This is the eye hands lens. Already we have folded it. It has no rings, but it has. Uh, it gives intermediate yeah. vision. Okay. We can put it in the cartridge and. Did the company give it to you folded like this? This is from Johns Johnson. No, actually they put it into the cartridge and put it out. So that's how. It's uh, shown, but it's basically the same as more platform as thickness one, but the anterior surface is a little more convex, and it gives you wonderful. I mean, in it's uh, I'm amazed with the near vision that the patient get, patient gets. So uh, with. So with uh, many of uh, uh, these lenses which have come with uh, enhanced uh, monofocal kind of thing where there is an extended range of vision. So we have done few studies using the eye trace as well as, uh, you know, one of the things is that uh, you have to study these lenses after a particular period after surgery. So if you are, you, you know, checking one month post-operatively, it's not a problem because uh, all, the, all these hydrophobic IOLs patient has some pseudo accommodation even for one month because the capsule is still elastic and it, uh, the lens can move a little bit. But after three months, it really stabilizes. So what, what you have to actually analyze is after three months of the surgery. Right. Changes. Like now you example, can see that you you there is the no rings in the lens, but still there is some, uh, some uh, uh, curvature change. That's why it gives intermediate vision. You want to say something? So, for example, recently Alcon has come up with the paper using Clarion.
most of the patients are getting, uh, getting very good uh, uh, intermediate vision, which is a white paper which has been published. So the reason is that the duration and what exactly you are calling a intermediate vision. So even when you are using a regular monofocal, if we check it on eye tracy or you check uh, using the depth of focus curve, you will have 0.5 to 0.75 diopter of Tell depth it. of uh, focus even with <laughs> focus. What these lenses do is that they increase it Prankas, by a certain you can, amount. Uh, so for the I next case. After this is your case. So IHANS typically enhances it by around 0.6 to 0.7 diopters. That's it. So 0.5 is because of the size and other things and 0.6 is because of the lens and you, you end up having maybe plus one diopter of additional addition. If you use say magnificent, so magnificent has slightly higher addition and it gives up to 1.1 diopter of addition apart from your regular uh, you know depth of focus. So up to 1.5 diopters none of these enhanced uh, uh, you know monofocals give because 1.5 is the criteria for calling it extended depth of focus. So anything Jai below Jai that Jai. is uh, just some additional spherical aberration which gives a little bit of intermediate vision. It's not crisp. So what we do is that we do monovision so slightly give you additional uh, slightly keep it myopic in the what? other eye and binocularly patient does fairly okay. I think uh, next surgeon. Yeah, uh, Pradeep, uh, Dr. Pradeep Mahanta, you, you were going to do a heart cataract, correct? So we'll have the next surgery by Dr. Pradeep Mahanta, heart cataract, followed by uh, talk by Dr. Madhurima on uh, importance of training the non-dominant hand, and then of course Pankaj ke baayen hat ka khel. So yeah, you're live and visible. Okay. Please switch to the OT camera. Yes, Dada. Yes. We are hearing you loud and clear. We can see Dr. Pradeep Mahanto. Yes. Pradeep Dada is trying to save the time because the train is running a little bit late. Yes. <laughs> but I think if we are running just about half an hour late, that's okay. In a yeah, roughly program. around half an hour to 40 minutes late. He's trying to save the time. So we can see it's a nice black cataract. Oh. Uh. But good thing is it's a nicely dilated pupil. That's something which is yes. And I think he's going to use a submarine chop, so... But dilating people makes a lot of difference in these kind of cases when you're... Is it visible, Shubhan? Yes, absolutely clear. Agdam. I look at the other. There is a simple drag button. This is Hailu Kot. Same, 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 same. And at this, just over the capsule, I start giving the Methyl cell. Yes, methyl cell. we can see very clearly. So, yes, using so basically modified shaft cell technique, you can yes. say. Yes. Yeah, 
করা যাবে স্কুটার রাখবেন তো এস ফ্যাম সিটার রাখবেন প্ল্যান ইস টু ডু আ লার্জ রেক্সেস নিডল পানিছ নিডল this should be adequate yes looks like this is a larger excess considering the fact that it's a hardish cataract though may not be absolutely necessary if you chop it into smaller fragments you can always get away but then it's safer because when you're removing the quadrants there would be a significant stress on the zonules unless the fragments are very small yet power 90 90 power 460 vacuum 46 flow rate 460 vacuum vacuum is 460 flow rate 46 and power is 90 so that's brute force so you bury the phaco trip into the nuclear material a little uh, closer to the incision uh, and then go into the meat of the nucleus and go a significant length on the other side unlike the direct chops where we actually just fixated a little in the center and we use the chopper so here it's more of the phaco probe traveling it's a longer travel for the Pico Pro. Yes. I don't uh, see. I'll have to. Uh, you'll have to ask the surgeon for that. So uh, the question is, each one has his own preferences of dealing with cataracts, heart cataracts. So. So some people may not be very comfortable with the fact that you don't see most of the tip. Or you, if the tip travels a lot, I'm not very comfortable with it. I like to just bury it into the nucleus and use my chopper and use a vertical chopper, uh, a vertical chop which is very well inside the capsular excess margin. I look good. I really never, never go under the capsular excess margin at all. Okay. So each surgeon has, and whereas the terminal chop, they go into the equator and bring it down. And I, I won't be very comfortable to see. Each surgeon has, no, no, he uses this regularly. He uses submarine chop regularly. 
I think uh, this is a very, very uh, good technique. Uh, the reason is that uh, it basically combines two techniques together. Like most of the cases, very hard cataract, as uh, Dr. Sudeep sir showed, make a deep trench to start with and then do a chop or, you know. Here it's combined. And the advantage of doing a submarine chop is that you can go deep at the one go itself without, even you can use the best, uh, you know, energy. It's not going to damage the endothelium anyway. And once you reach there, the hold is very good because now there is, uh, you know, when you do a, a stop and chop, there is no good hold. But here, yeah, here you are, you are you just pierce it through and through, just like a needle, and then you, you have very good hold, so you can chop it very, very, very well. So I think the, I think the concept is very good, and uh, it's uh, it's very good reproducible technique. Of course, you need little bit of experience to start with this. So for uh, you know beginners, I would advise go with the deep trench and divide, and later once you get used to the depth. At which depth? Because if you do the submarine chop with very superficial tip, it's not going to work. You are going to land up with a big posterior plate, which is difficult to divide. So always start doing it once you get the good ju uh, judgment of the depth. And it works very well in most of the cases. So basically, it's, a, uh, it's the amount of power that you're going to use. Or, or if you use less power, you're going to be pushing the nucleus. So you have to see how much power you're using to... Get past see, the hardness of the cattle. Yes, Shabar ke baal. Patri, did I add something? See, yeah. So now… Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. It it's is a lot of saving on the power. Company. So all the trenching is not required and you have divided it already. So it becomes in two pieces. You can go into the smaller pies and it's only the removal of the fragments then that takes up the power. So, but the technique is very important. It's a large nucleus. You have fragile capsule and zonules might be unstable. So the stability of the anterior chamber is of paramount importance. So if there is instability of the anterior chamber, you might weaken the zonules. There could be zonular dialysis and you can also rupture the, uh, the anterior capsule. You can have a runoff. So all these things taken into command. Doctor, this is… Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. This is a City Lucia lens. Krishan who is here, he is going to test cells happening about the lens. So, City Lucia, uh, C loop. Preloaded. City Lucia preloaded uh, C loop with heparin coating monofocal lens. Yeah, so, this is a CT Lucia lens, again a very, very favored lens. Uh, and uh, the amount of uh, push that is required for this lens to go in is might be a little more. But it is a very stable lens and the PCO is minimal in these lenses. Yeah, with a 2.2 millimeter incision, it goes in very, very well. You can do a wound assisted and uh, very easy to implant. This is the IOL scaffold for the last piece. Oh, I see. IOL scaffold for the last piece. Let's turn around. So that was on intention, Pradeep, the IOL scaffold technique? Yes, because uh, <laughs> uh, beginners should know this. Yes, yes, for definitely, hard candidates, definitely. You yes. should not take the risk for the… You have sure. done the hard work. And Surely. It should not happen during the last piece. Absolutely. Yes, we will go for wash, Pankaj. After this, there is a talk for from Madhurima. Madhurima, get ready. Okay. Anyway, I mean, uh, I think we have. During this time, we should not touch the lens. We should be away from the lens, away from the corneal endothelium, right at the center, and emulsify the last piece should not apply ultrasound on the lens because that can damage the surface of the lens. Uh, okay. Uh, Yes, Pradeep, we are seeing whatever you are doing. We just have to do a neck muscle exercise. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> so all good. I think. Uh, yeah, so uh, we can see uh, Saji wonderfully done in the bag and uh, absolutely looks like the scorny is going to be very clear tomorrow. And now he's going under the lens to remove that little bit of visco, I think. No, 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 he's still. Hey, phantom on the guru, phantom. Fan. Uh, Dr. Madhurima, can you come up, please? Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm a projector lagbe. Uh, so, uh, get this. Seems good. See the uh, wound, there is no wound burn because the uh, clever design of the tip, I think. The, and maybe use of ultrasound. What do you think, Subin? How we can prevent the wound burn? Yeah, you were saying something, Pradipta? How we can prevent wound burn? Tell the beginners. Yeah, so uh, for wound burn, uh, it's very important that you have flow always. The flow going in and flow coming out because that is what is going to cool that phaco tip. So the moment that closes, you kind of, I don't want to miss out on my food, so please go keep it over here. I'm hungry too. <laughs> so, so, take it. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful show. So, wound burn, basically, if you're going to use a high molecular viscoelastic, before you enter the antechamber with your FACO Pro, please remove a significant amount of it because you are going to be otherwise, it's going to come into the uh, sleeve and it's going to choke your uh, as, uh, this thing back flow and that's going to, uh, I mean, it's going to cho choke your movement of uh, uh, fluid. So, this, the sleeve is not going to allow uh, the fluid to go and the tip is going to cause a burn, right? So when that's what I was about to say, like if you inject uh, the sodium hyaluronate chondroitin sulfate combination yeah. and fill up the anterior chamber completely, which is not necessary, you just need to inject under the uh, yes. cornea yeah. and then you go in and switch on your phaco, hmm. you will get a wound burn Absolutely. very, very quickly. Absolutely. The other thing is, if you angle the phaco, a lot of people, beginners, hmm. they tend to angle the phaco handpiece a lot. So the upper, the upper part of the sleeve is sort of totally compressed. Yes. The needle is against uh, the sleeve. There's no flow at that point. So then also they'll get a burn. Yes. So absolutely. they have to remember to keep the phaco handpiece as flat as possible within mm. the eye. They don't need to angle it down uh, towards the nucleus that much. Excellent tips. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Sudeep. And we'll now have a small talk by Dr. Madhuruma on the le left hand phaco. Uh, ambidextrous. Yeah, ambidextrity. Uh, very good afternoon to everybody present here. I am Dr. Madhurima Kumar, senior resident at RIO Kolkata. I am extremely grateful to Dr. Pradeep Mahanto sir for giving me this opportunity to share the stage with all of the eminent stalwarts of ophthalmology. So, to begin my talk, I would just like to know a show of hands how many of us are truly right hand dominant here? Most of us. So, that is the thing. So, 88% of us we use the left part of our cerebral hemispheres. I just want to ask Dr. Pradeep whether that uh, pre-chopper is available uh, commercially now or not yet. No, it is uh, not yet available. I am trying to develop it further and make it uh, look uh, good and um, yes, refine and uh, maybe within three to four months it should be available. Yes, 
सब आपके पैर में Yeah. So as I was saying, so most of us are right hand dominant, which means that we use the left part of our cerebral hemispheres more. And uh, dexterity is obviously an extremely important for any good ophthalmic surgeon. And ambidexterity should be our ultimate goal. Now coming to why we need, uh, why do we need to be ambidextrous? Now the use of both hands. Um, sorry, my slide shows. Uh, no, it's uh, paused. <laughs> yeah, so sorry for the delay. Uh, so why do we need ambidexterity? The use of both hands is now more critical than ever uh, as we need its utility in peritrach ophthalmology, oculoplasty as well as vitroretinal surgery. Even we need to use both our feet to control both the microscope and the phaco emulsification foot pedal simultaneously. And obviously, almost all types of intraocular surgeries need the use of both hands simultaneously, starting from what can be small pterygium cases to obviously the vitroretinal cases. And it is not only in surgery, but during our daily OPD procedures, such as gonioscopy, 90D microscopy using the slit lamp, laser contact lenses, we need to use both our hands everywhere. Sole dependence on the dominant hand, especially in a microsurgical field, hampers both the ergonomy as well as the success of surgery. So being equally competent with a non-dominant hand affords advantages, especially in uh, temporal side surgeries, overcoming obstruction from nasal bridge, handling complications, etc. So uh, these are a few examples of where we need like intraocular lens implantation, vitroretinal surgeries, uh, trabecular, trabo -trab surgeries. So what are the common challenges faced by us? Challenging to use both hands in coordinated manner for novices, especially such as us. Use of the non-dominant hand is very frustrating and the learning curve can be slow. We can experience tremors and unexpected movements of the non-dominant hand while operating. There, it has been seen in literature that there are more complications while operating on the left eyes for a right hand dominant surgeon. It has been seen that left hand surgeons achieve ambidexterity out of necessity and therefore develop better skill set. So what can we do about it? Um, during uh, COVID-19, what we did when we did not have access to microscopes and uh, hospitals, we used a kitchen ophthalmological setup and what we use as trainees like tomato for manual SICS, practicing tunnel, capsulorexis, then grapes for suture practice with a smartphone to provide magnification and light. A wet lab setup wherever it is available should definitely be used for regular and rigorous practice. A vitretinal simulator if available, such as an eye size surgical simulator, where available. So this is a picture of a vitretinal simulator, and this is a wet lab setup. So how could we plan for progress? We should identify our weaknesses and limitations, set specific goals, and important is to record our own surgeries for review and so that our seniors can point out our mistakes. What are the strategies that we can adopt at home training of the non-dominant hand? in daily tasks such as combing, brushing teeth, applying nail polish, eating, writing, everything. So what do we do outside? Uh, recreational training such as colored on targeted areas such as coloring books, mandala art, all very small uh, tasks. Then we can start using a non-dominant hand for short durations during work in the OPD such as slit lamp biomicroscopy, applanation tonometry, gonioscopy, direct ophthalmoscopy. So what we have to say is that structured repetitive stimulator training as well as paper-based training can reduce the tremors in the non-dominant hand, improves our speed and overall surgical outcome. As we all say, practice makes perfect. So we should aim to be shobbo shachi, which means to be ambidextrous in both our hands. Uh, that is all I have to say for today. And um, I uh, think OSWB has already said that um, we lost one of our beloved SRs, Dr. Devaduti Chatterjee, on Friday. 
So just in eternal memory of him. Thank you all so much. So while I do phaco emulsification, I have to use my left hand. And in every other surgery, I have to use my left hand. No, sir, I have never used the hand piece in the left hand. So Pankaj, sir, to will show. Yeah, Pankaj, we can see you. Absolutely clear. Yes, so Pankaj uh, is from GIA Medical College, Gwalior, DNB, Shankar Nitrale, FRCS, wonderful guy. And right now in Narayan Nitrale, sector 5. Pankaj, uh, we can't see your surgery feed, we can only see the slide showing your picture. So somebody in the OT can please give us the microscope feed, yes. So Pankaj, would you like to tell us something about uh, which eye this is and we can't hear you actually. He's, he's operating on the left eye now, Yeah. so he'll be using his uh, left uh, hand. What I remember is in Will's Eye Institute, uh, they teach all the residents to do that. Operate the right, uh, right eye with the right hand and the left eye with the yeah. uh, left hand. Can we, hello, Surinda? Yes, Pankaj. Yes, now I'm ready yeah. and it's a, as usual left eye and that's what my technique, what I will do it. Uh, we have a 1.2. It's a side port what I usually make. It's basically 1.2 carato what mm. I usually make. I don't use the normal. This go. Usually I don't use a type and blue until it's a white cataract or maybe jet black where we can... Is it clear? Yeah, it's very clear. Uh, it's a little bit hazy for me, that's the reason. <laughs> 62? Can we have something to hold in the left hand? Uh, now, nah, for them. Mm, now it's clear. So at last we are seeing somebody do it with a needle. I was using a needle. Oh, you were using a needle, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah the first, I think uh, Pradeep and uh, Saurav used uh, capsule excess forceps. Of that. See, each one of us grows with our own uh, practices which we are comfortable. So those who have been using a needle will swear by the needle and those who have been using a capsule excess force yes. will swear Shut by up. the capsule excess I think it's like your spouse, you get used to it. <laughs> uh, yes. <I always> use <laughs> My spouse is not hearing so we don't say that. <laughs> uh, 
now like uh, Let's say 2.8. So I'll be using the 2.8. That's what my routine thing is. Routine. Okay. Yeah. This is what uh, it's a zero degree roughly around. Okay. So we have a two opening. One so you're sitting at the head end and you're using the temporal incision. Uh, yeah. Left hand temporal incision. Yes. Yeah, so left eye, left hand, right eye, right hand. Okay. Right eye, right hand. So basically, you're using everything that you would do with the right hand, with the left hand. So your hydro dissection and everything goes with the left. Yes, yes, yes. So we are using which machine? Galaxy Pro Orbit. Okay. Okay, you're using Galaxy Pro Orbit with the 2.2 yes. tip. The, I, I don't know which tip is there. I'm using this machine first time. Let's see. I asked them to reduce the parameter. Let's see how it works out. So it's a demo come life surgery for me. Okay. Nah, it what is it's now? live and surprise. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Now what are you? Pierce of skin? That's two thirds. Pierce of skin? That's a 2.8. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I use a 15 regular. Yes. Let's see. So basically your chopper and your FACO tip will move almost uh, what like 70 or 80 degrees away from each other they are coming. Yes. It's more than that. I mean sorry 180 close to 180 yeah. degrees. So now my thing is I just do I just do little bit and then little bit chop away. So I am getting chopped. So there is a bit of a hard endonucleus here, yes. which is a little unexpected. Yes. So now we have a, what I do, usually I just remove this. And now, Dr. Sudeep showed nice seven, eight chopping. It was a nice dense cataract. And it's a fairly okay cataract, not that dense cataract. Hey, power kato hai chere? Ita sak kam kurte. Na, ota vacuum. So we have an option of uh, either small small pieces can take out in this kind of cataract or we can have a little bit two or three chopping and then remove it. Excellent. But again, the holdability, fold followability, everything is fantastic, isn't it? I mean, you are using yeah, it for the, the first, first time. time. First time I am yeah. using the machine, and that's what we don't feel Look any problem. Look at the holdability, so, it just so moves what, around the tip. And fantastic. Uh, I have been one very happy user with this machine. And oh, wow, that's a good thing. It's, uh, okay, it's so excellent. My chamber remains absolutely stable. There's no, and there's no chatter. No chatter the at thing all. is, there's no chatter. The followability is so It's good. very controlled. Yeah. And of course, uh, the anterior chamber uh, main depth maintenance is phenomenal. Very good. Yes, it is. The energy utilization is much less. <laughs> yeah, if the energy was very high, there would be chatter. Yes. It's a little wee bit slower than your regular linear FACO, but then it gives you a lot more control over so here. Usually see, look at him going for the epinucleus now. Now, see, see, that's the confidence the Prankaj has. New yeah. machine. Epinucleus came out because I've done a hydro dissection. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you've done it, but I think. 
Yeah. It takes a little bit of courage with a new machine to no, go no, for the go no, after no, the nuclear. Yeah, that's what the cell line does. Cell line does. See, after removing the nuclear, cell line cannot. Cell line normal cannot. Now we put the cable. That's the motor. No, hydro cannot. Hydro. Yeah. So after that, I usually I have the habit of doing this little bit hydro. Loosening the cortex from Loosening the PC. The Shaking it up a bit. Yeah. A wonderful surgery. I'm seeing uh, <laughs> this way of doing it after a very long time. Using the left hand for sitting superiorly and doing temporal. I've seen this earlier, but not for many years now. <laughs> no. No. And one more thing. Like I said, we get used to our spouses. We get used to our spouses. I will wake up, baby. Are you present? The way of doing things. Gentlemen, my name is Lilia. Now, it's a... Rashpati. Oh, it's a key. It's a bend, I say. Oh. Do you use for it? Oh, no, ma'am. See, this is a bend one. Let's see. Sort of new thing. It's a left hand foot. Put it on. Spatula, you have to dial it. Dial it, no? I think that's a demonstration of excellent control with the left hand. So this I mean, is a, a coaxial true, IA. True, true, yeah, coaxial IA. Bend tip. True, true, uh, I mean, absolute kind of mirror image surgery, you know. Now you give me, I'll show you very, very important thing. Just uh, by myself, by myself. Bi-manual, expression, you know? Expression, bi-manual expression. Bi-manual expression, now, open, open. But, it's too nice. See, we'll see, that was I was telling. If you do that, and this is the cortex, you can just... So there he's using the coaxial uh, for the infusion and he's using the aspiration on the bi-manual. Oh, it's passive, passive aspiration. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what he was telling over here. Yeah, correct, correct. Like so the flute basically, is the irrigation like which is going needle. into the port, which is pushing the cortex in. Yes, yes. Amazing! I've never seen this. <laughs> flute needle. Flute needle. Oh, that's everything has come out. Fantastic. Absolutely perfect. One small wisp probably there at maybe yeah, eight o'clock. Yeah. But for youngsters, I would say that you don't struggle removing the last fibers. They don't really do anything. And uh, I've seen a lot of PCRs and uh, things happening because people struggle to remove these tiny fibers which are there. I, do, I don't use the hydro, I don't use visco. I just hydrate my all the port and put the lens. So let's see which lens is this. And these are a lot of lenses because the, the lens what I put, I just put inside without having any part of the lens. This is a Swiss pole from Upper Sami. No, so usually what I do, give the lens. So you will load the lens. So you will load the lens. So you will load the lens. See, I don't load. Actually, basically what happens, uh, I just uh, do the nice hydration of both the ports. I make only two ports. So do the hydration and then put the lens uh, inside the eye. We can't hear you very clearly, Pankaj. So what lens are you using? Uh, this is the Swiss fob. We'll uh, get the details. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir, this is Swiss Pro from Apasami. Mm. So this is actually advanced day monofocal lens and we promise intermediate with this because this has a, a small radius Very for the distance and rest uh, we uh, modified the spherical aberration throughout the lens so we ensure 60 to 66 centimeter intermediate by basically, the virtue of this lens. Yeah, okay, thank you. Basically, I don't know this new cartridge and all I'm using but let's see. I usually put like this. And 
that's all. That's what my routine is. So lens has gone inside the bag and uh, no viscoelastic since we have not put the no 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 by manual uh, no, coexist coexist always coexist so yes. since we have not put the visco we will not remove it yep so this hydro implantation yeah it's a hydro implantation only yeah no? but not without uh, i mean not uh, with irrigation he just sort of maintains the anterior chamber seals yeah. the wounds and just the lens just goes in okay. and sits in the bag this quick was there so i just removed yeah. this and down so left left hand thou dialer thou beta that i think is a very useful tip for all uh, younger colleagues over here because uh, once if you are worried about aspirating the posterior capsule when you are doing taking out a small wisp once you have that iol in place you can be absolutely go and chase that wisp very safely and i usually put my haptic uh, temporal yes ah oh, sir like no that was excellent wonderful excellent let's give him a round of applause wonderful job pankaj thank you for demonstrating your left hand surgery and this uh, swiss fob lens i used a few of them and uh, they actually have got about n8 uh, for nia a 66 with n8 kuchi 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 very good pets. lens and of course you don't get uh, this sort of are we breaking for lunch after this uh yeah then so yes, it's please. over sir yes thank you very yeah. much uh, anybody from the organizing over here lunch ke khane na bahire One, one more surgery dada so we'll break for lunch now no, i know we have one more surgery dada okay just a minute just a minute so okay so we have one more surgery now and so then that will be the right eye with the right hand that's what pradeep da wanted me to do okay so right eye right hand okay so it will be a mirror image <laughs> <laughs> please, no, no. i don't know dada it's a machine new everything is there other way, other way. So it has a a machine ha no but it didn't look like you were using a machine for the first time that's what because machine is good yeah. not the surgeon <laughs> both pankaj yes sir are you trying to be modest <laughs> no 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 <laughs> it's a machine is good assistant is good beautiful assistant ha sab acche hain sirf surgeon theek nahi hai a surgeon to thoda thoda kar raha hai kya hai yes agar assistant acche nahi ho machine acha na ho to surgeon bechara kya kare bilkul bilkul chalo thank you wonderful wonderful sir the man behind the machine or the woman behind the machine Oh, maybe we have woman who's beside you. Ha! Ek ta club sort diye to, ek ta upri jaaye ma. Ek ta club sort to, ek ta upri jaaye. Acha, chhika, change kore niche. Usually, I put two. Change it. I think. Uh... দিচ্ছি দিচ্ছি ভাই কিচ্ছু হবে না কোন কথা লাগবে না কিচ্ছু হবে না মা কোন ভাই করবেন না ঠিক না বস হাত নিচে হাত নিচে বা না পড়ে দিচ্ছি করে দিচ্ছি করে দিচ্ছি বা হাত হাত নিচে सब दीजिए तू मेरे डाउ में टर्न बटन लंच कर लेते हैं यहाँ संभालो हाँ हाँ डेट हो गया था लंच के लिए ब्रिक करवाते हैं पैरामीटर कम करे ना जानी ना किया छे दादा का तो कौन 
একটু কম করে দাও ফর্টি ফাইভ কি জায়গা থার্টি ফাইভ করে দাও কম করে দাও অনেক কম করে দাও ওয়েট টু টু মেকি আছে তোমার সাজির সময় সবাই উঠে যাব কিন্তু বলে দিচ্ছি বসো সুমিদ্রা সুমিদ্রা বসো বসো মৈত্রেই বসো মাছ খাও মৈত্রেই বসে মাছ খাও প্রদীপ দা বসো 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 একটু দূর করে দাও So Pankaj makes uh, incisions of the side port a little on the sleral side, right? Avoiding yeah. the cornea directly. Emma? Hand over the cup. পঙ্কজ স্যার আপনি আওয়াজ বহুত ধীমি বহুত আহিস্তা আহিস্তা বোল রে স্যার So, Sudeep, actually, the nucleus is uh, bulkier than we thought, is it not? Yes, yes. You could actually see the tinge of the color through the white cortex. So, pupil it is, is good. But the pupil is fully dilated, so yeah. that makes it a lot easier. But not that it's easy. And there will be a posterior a plate in this posture. Little bit. Zonules are not that great. Let's see how it works out. And there will be a posterior plate. 
या लेट सी एक मिनट डायला 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 तो फर्स्ट एफ सो दिस इज द गैलेक्सी प्रो राइट दिस इज अगेन द नो दिस इज फर्स्ट एफ फर्स्ट एफ फर्स्ट एफ फर्स्ट एफ जी अच्छे था Uh, we, uh, so the we didn't get it. Uh, which machine? This is the unnamed uh, machine. Uh huh. Unnamed, unnamed. Oh, okay, okay, unnamed. Acha. <laughs> Ta, Taylor. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. No problem. Some machine is there. And uh, now, hey, Baba, kiss it, Chota. चौपर दे हेलो ये क्या प्राइवेट है सर ओके सो द इट्स गॉन द चॉप इज गॉन थ्रू एंड थ्रू यस सो फॉर्चूनेटली देयर इज नॉट मच ऑफ अ पोस्टीरियर प्लेट या सो विदाउट गोइंग वेरी डीप ही डिड द होल द रेक चॉप एंड द थिंग इज यूजिंग अ सिंस्की ही इज नॉट यूजिंग अ चॉपर एट ऑल यस यस सो इट्स बेसिकली ही इज डूइंग मल्टी लेवल यस The As, Sinsky is, in fact, going multi-level. Yes, but Sinsky is going multi-level. Mm. So as it starts dividing, it goes deeper, and then again takes a deeper bite and yeah. keeps doing it till the whole thing cracks. Yes. I do basically reverse chopping also in between. Yeah. So when I hold, I just chop like this, this side and this side. It's actually easier to do because you're not crossing the feco when you yes. do uh, chop the reverse chop the regular way, mm. where your uh, chopper is coming from much yes. closer to the feco tip. You have to actually cross over or under, which becomes very difficult. Mm. Agree. Here it's uh, it still remains on the side. Yes, perfect. and now whatever plate he had uh, he is crossover shopping lo bhai eh thoda badha do kitna hai power nahi ye vacuum vacuum kitna hai 350 350 okay. 350 and 35 fr 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 enter kar do 400 slow ja raha hai That was wonderful again. Fantastic. Those who are bankrupt, they take Uber Eye. So again, we went to the. Here, there's not that much of cortex. Yes. Ikko visko ta. Ikko visko diya ta. <laughs> to left hand uh, i am not used to for this bend one actually but it's okay so bankaj you will be very uh, happy to know that people in hajipur mm -hmm. my very good friend dr shakil ahmed ansari uh -huh. he is watching your surgery from hajipur He is getting a haircut done and watching your surgery. Wow! <laughs> really, really. So live transmission, yes. Left. What about five hundred? Some dis disparity in the opening, actually. uh what uh, pradeep is saying is that we can have parthos uh, talk next uh 
I think everybody is uh, going for lunch. Okay. So, Fine. Yeah. So, then let's go for lunch and then maybe. Okay. So, now only part is left to put the lens. But the beauty of this, I am holding the posterior capsule. I can hold the posterior capsule, I can polish with this, I can do everything. It's completely Excellent. passive. Amazing. Very, very, very beautiful <laughs> demonstration. <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it unless I'd seen this. <laughs> How did you even think of this? <laughs> So basically, see, what is the problem with the uh, coaxial? It's a sub-incisional cortex. And let's go, what is it? Or what? Are you not? No, 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 what do you want to do? What is it? This is a supra-sub uh, info. Uh, lens, lens to give you a lens. What is it? What is the patient to give you a lens? This is the supra-sub info from the Appasami company. They say you can get like a progressive, <laughs> intermediate, <laughs> distance <laughs> and oh. near also. This has the very small central uh, ring. Mm. That is what, one point something? So this is uh, the EDOF also? Yes, this is an EDOF lens. So it gives good intermediate mm. and uh, near N8 probably. M8 at 40 centimeters and of course uh, minimal disautopsia. Yes. Yeah. Excellent, fantastic. So the central aperture is 1.3 and uh, yeah, and then there is a 4.7 millimeter progressive air sphere. Okay. So, so he rotated it. changes from center to uh, yeah. periphery, okay. And I think the haptics uh, Pankaj rotated to 0, 180. Yes, that a little bit actually inferior temporal in this case, just 20 degree, because the dysphotopsia and all, it's much less if you just rotate in that absolutely. direction. Yeah, absolutely, true. absolutely. True. Yeah, so in both the eyes, if you notice, uh, in the left eye, I had, I kept that the inferior temporal and the right eye also the same way. Kuchi, kuchi, buts. But I have a habit of still telling Kuchi. Yeah, that's what uh, we call it. <laughs> still that word is there with me. And uh, fortunately my all the OT sisters, they know what Kuchi means. We'll take a break now and start in about 45 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks thank a lot. you, sir. Thank, thank you, you for thank you. watching. And sister is excellent. She assisted me. Very nice. Very yeah. good. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.
হলে তো ভালোই হয়ে যেত ঠিক আছে কাজ করছি না 